Atlas. Go, 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 robot. Good morning. The show will start in a couple minutes. I'm the Grow Boss, and if you have questions about cannabis, you can call me. I've got an exciting show today. I don't really know if it's going to be any more exciting than any other show. However, I'm expecting a couple calls. Someone from Finland is going to call in and talk to us about the laws in Finland about growing cannabis. I think we may even get a call from Queen Bee, who sent me some pictures about her grow. So give me a couple minutes. Everybody smoke a bowl. Let's let everybody else show up, and we will get started shortly. Good morning. Hey, Semit, you're always super funny. Before I even start the show, I'm just going to go through it. We got to pull a couple more people, give them a chance to show up. <coughs> I think I've got all my equipment on lock today. I think I do. I think I fixed the problem from yesterday. So let me just say good morning, BCC. Jesus Bukio. Growers and killers. What's up, people? Good morning. Smoke. So let's see. Who can I see? In, who can I smoke with in my magic bowl today? Let's see, I can smoke with Thrashadelic and and Albert Collins, Semit, and Matt Beazel. Ah, yes. New customer stories today. Ah, I have got some you shit stories today from, uh, from customers. I think I even found out where that too much light was coming from. Um, remember I kept trying to solve it from over here? Nope. There it is. It's coming from this computer. So... Let me see if I can back this bitch away. Maybe aim it in a little different direction. Or maybe I could even aim it up a little. Ah, son of a bitch. Maybe I can aim it. That sucks to look at. Ah, the technicalities of doing a show. Oh, Imperial Beach, Central Oregon. Who can I smoke a bowl with today? Ah. Alberta, Canada. Oh, OMC, I would appreciate if you would call in and imitate some of my favorite customers. Because I got to tell you guys, like, I got a lot of customers and I know you think I bitch about them. But listen, I'm a paramedic nurse. I'm going to tell you a secret. I like the crazy ones better than I like the regular ones. 
Oh, here you go. Good boy. I forgot to give you a treat. Here you go. Oh, I know, but you're just going to have to enjoy it today. No chasing it around. Oh, I haven't even started the show yet, and I'm already off track. Okay, so the cameras are good. I kind of sounds good so far, and all the cameras are recording. Dude, I really think I've got this. How do I tell what kind of plant I have? It's probably cannabis, Mark. Mm. I got a call from 565, but hey, listen, 567, you're going to have to call me back in a couple of mem- minutes. Hey, listen, Rai Rai, my favorite cooking recipe, I hate eating cannabis. Uh, you should watch a, f- a few weeks ago, I smoked some wax. Ah, oh, dude, I had an anxiety attack. Ah, oh, good, I get to smoke a bowl with somebody from Colorado, too. Mm. Uh, yes. Hit that like blam uh thomas chavez so we got like about 120 people so we got most of the crew and i got to admit i'm starting to learn the crew like some one of you guys ordered something from me and i was like oh shit that guy i think it was uh oh man uh, i totally remember this guy's name when i see it let me see if i can get through it and remember it oh potsy weeder <laughs> Oh, Finland. Love saying, hey, stick around for the show, Finland, because I think I got somebody else calling in today to talk about the laws going on in Finland, too. Um, Let's see. Oh, uh, Iraqi vet, Iraq, Iraq vet, Iraq vet party. Listen, I got your apology on the, on the, uh, for the, uh, blah, 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 blah. clearly I'm working it out today. I got your apology on the comment section. 20%, 21% off lift. All right, let that go. I got your apology on the on the uh, comment section of the video. And I understand your point. And that was why I literally just said, I'm glad everything's going well for you. I didn't want to engage you in any kind of combative way or be polarizing with you. One, you're a vet. So I got to say, like anybody who stops their life <laughs> to take care of the rest of us, I will stop my life for as well. So that's why you got that. You got that type of response from me because you deserve it. And I just wanted to thank you else. Thank you so much. Oh, you're already high. That's okay. Mr. Andrew, you could get high again. All right. Anyone else in Vegas? Last name change. Kevin K. Smoking some blue dream. Dabbing on some super silver haze. Ontario, Canada. Dunkin' Donuts. Dude, I worked at Dunkin' Donuts for like five days they came in and found me <laughs> reading one of my books from school eating a, eating donuts and she come the manager comes in and she's like can i get the receipt for that subway sandwich i was eating subway sandwiches and the donut guy was walking out the subway guy was walking out with donuts and she's like can i get the receipt for that sub sandwich and i was like sure and i pointed to the trash can of abandoned receipts and she's all you're fired I called the Dunkin' Donuts guy across the street and I was like, listen, I mean, I called the Subway sandwich across the street and listen, I'm at the Dunkin' Donuts across the street. If you send someone over here, I'll give you donuts for a sandwich. And the manager came in. (laughs) I was studying for school. It was a nothing job. It's okay. (laughs) She's like, can I get a receipt for those donuts, please? And I was like, uh, pointed at the trash can. Yeah. I love greetings from Phoenix. Um, oh my God. Hey, Ralph, come here. Oh, geez. You know what? No, no, I'm not even going to engage you today, Ralph. You know what? You can just eat your treat and enjoy it. He wants me to throw it out back because then he goes and hunts for it. Um, okay. So this was some Afghan that one of the customers brought in and tried to, uh, get out of paying my cash for the equipment with some bud. You know, sometimes I trade sometimes, you know what I mean? But Usually what I do is I buy like an ounce a month and I just puff on it and we all just puff on it. So I'm smoking with Phoenix and Florida, North Carolina. I'm smoking with Does Boot, Wisconsin. Oh, dude, I was just the worst employee everywhere. Come on, come on, eat your treat. I was just the worst employee everywhere. Vegas, thanks vet, Semper Fi. Um, oh, that's right. Say, hey, as long as you're on the show and watching the show, I've decided that I should probably encourage you guys to click on the like button, subscribe to the channel, because you got to sponsor the vendors that sponsor me. We've got Mondi. You look at the top corner of your screen. We got Green Pad. Ah. Oh. 
That one was for uh, North Carolina. Um, oh, 614. In it, para. Is it you? You know what? It might be. Yeah, love Santa. I think it is. Um, <laughs> what? There's like seven people in Finland. Three of them are female. So, of course, love Santa knows in it. Um, smoking lemon sour diesel. Bah! Okay, I'll take the phone call. You got me. 614. Good morning. 614, you got to turn down your uh, computer. 614. Uh, you'll catch up. I got you. I'll wait a sec. Pineapple Express. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good, Ross. Good morning. Good morning. Yes, sir. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. I can hear you. You have to turn down your TV or phone. Can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. I can't hear you at all. You can't hear me at all. Um, okay, okay. Can't can you hear, hear me you, now? Bro boss. Can you hear me now? Okay, okay. Wait, 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 wait. Give me one sec. Give me one sec. Let me let me open up. I thought I had this whole thing. Let me open Good morning. Up. Good morning. Okay, so I'm on here. Let me hang on one sec. Okay, okay, okay. I okay. can't hear you. At okay, all, bro okay, boss. okay, 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 okay. I think blam how can you hear me now gotcha gotcha okay, okay yes, let sir. me do let me check one more thing can you still hear me now can you hear me now yes, check, check, check. okay dude i can hear you now that is why i just want to tell all of you that is why i refuse to hire the guy to come back in and show me how to use it because what the fuck would i do for the rest of my show today if i didn't know how to solve the problems you know what i'm saying i'm telling you the most important yes, thing is experience it's experience. Yes, sir. So what can I do for you? Sounds good to me right now. <laughs> okay. Uh, actually, I have just a quick question about the ideal air, air conditioner. Okay. Yes, that sir. Maybe you might be able to help me out because um, I have the room sealed. Um, I have it hooked up, both ducts going out the window. I have that all sealed. And somehow I'm losing a 20-pound bottle with a CO2 monitor controller in uh, two and a half days. How much light do you have? One. I got one 1,000 double-ended um, CMH. The 915 or whatever it is. Um, you're going to have to test the, the AC. The way that you test the AC is with a cigarette or some incense at the back of the AC where it sucks the room air in and then somebody has to be outside to smell, you know what I mean? To catch okay. the end, you're going to have to test and see it. I mean, you could, I mean, there's no way to generate a bunch of colored smoke. So it's not like you can see it out the window. So you have right, to do right. something that's scented. Um, see, now I've took, <laughs> I've took the, I went to Home Depot when I bought the, um, some of the, the ducting that has the, um, the um, uh, insulation and the silver stuff that go over top of that. So I took the ducting out of there, and I actually took and used that and um, stuck those over the two tubes that are all over the back of it and then taped it and sealed all that up. So it was like I, I cannot figure out for the life of me of how I'm emptying a 20-pound bottle in two and a half days. And, like, and I sealed that all up, too, you know what I mean? Because I thought of the same thing. I'm like, well, maybe, you know. So I sealed it all up, and I'm still somehow am losing it. Is it? Maybe, I, I don't know, maybe you understand, or maybe you might think of something I'm not. Do you have an AC vent from your house into the room? I got that all sealed up with that quarter-inch, uh, half-inch, um, you know, the the wall stuff that goes up, I can't think of what it's called, but, you know, the eight foot by four foot pieces, I've got the whole room lined with that. Okay. So I've got it, the AC vent covered. Go ahead. Is it is it sealed, though? No, I don't mean covered. I mean, is the can the AC from the house blow air into the room? Absolutely not. Okay, then you have to test the back of the AC because one of the things that I was thinking okay. was either you're blowing air or sucking air out of the room. So the return 
is probably right. not in the room. So the, op, the, op, the option would have been, are you blowing air into the room? Because if you're blowing air into the room, it's blowing it out back under the door. So at this point, you have to test the AC right. unit. And you are not the first person to tell me okay. that, that those two units are not, are not sealed as well as they seem to claim. <clears throat> I, I, I know. I know no, I'm glad talk. you said that because cause I call it ideal air. You know what I mean? I even called them. was like, listen, you know what I mean? I understand, you know, you know, I understand if I'm losing a little bit, you know, that I can understand. I said, but I'm, you know, losing a 20 pound bottle in literally two and a half days. And he went through a bunch of things. I was like, no, I got that done. I got this sealed. I got that. I got, you know what I mean? He was like, well, well if you're going to nitpick about it. And I'm like, uh, nitpick? Uh, I'm like, nitpick? Dude, it's two and a half days. Yeah. That's what he said to me. Well, there comes a point where... And I'm like, where, well, it's a 20-pound bottle, you know? <laughs> there comes a point where they don't have an answer. And so I think they do... Got I think you. you know what? I, I used to do tech support for computers. And there comes a point where you don't have an answer. And I got to tell you, at, 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 this week, I will send an email out to Ideal Air because I sell a lot of their ACs. And so I will send okay. an email out to Ideal Air... I'll get, I'll try to get an answer because I buy from Sunlight. I like Sunlight. Sunlight is extraordinarily right, right, right. So let's do this. I'll send an See, email. A boss, and it blows cold. I mean, like it keeps the room seventy-five degrees at all times. It's like perfect. You know what I mean? Except for the fact that I cannot keep any CO two in the room. Okay. Okay. Let me. In fact, do you have any other suggestions? Um, not until you test if it's actually the AC. Um, that's it. Until you put okay. a incense at the back of the AC inside and you have somebody separate. Well, obviously, if you have somebody standing Got outside, <laughs> there isn't too much I can offer you until you prove that. So okay. um, let me do this. Quick question about the two duct AC unit. Hang on a second. Let me do. Let me just do this because I know the guy. No, go ahead. Go ahead. Go I, the guy is fantastic. So let me See, just because. Do and, and let me say this real quick while you're doing that, because I, I literally was like, OK, and I got so confused and I was just, in, you know, like inspector, you know what I mean? Like inspecting everything I could to think of it. So finally, I turned the air conditioner off because I actually I did a, a trade from the condition that I had that was just way overkill. Worked perfect, just way overkill. And, and, and it worked perfect with steel too and everything. So I took that out, put these in, sealed everything. And um, now once I got through all that, I went ahead and was like, okay, wait a minute. So I turned the air conditioner off. I got it up to 1,000 ppm, shut the air conditioner off, and I sat in the room for like 25 minutes. And it just steadily kept climbing. Like, it, I wasn't losing anything. It got to, like, 1275 or something like that from just me being in the room. And then as soon as I turned the air conditioner back on, it would suck down to 8-something, kick back on with my controller, go back up to 1080, shut off, and then in, like, 10 minutes, it would be back down to 811 and kick back on. Um, okay. In fact, there so are... Like, two with Go ahead. Uh, no, no, no. Um, I, I, I understand your point. So I suspect that you're going to go out and find out that it's leaking. So um, hang on, let me finish this of Ace. So the, in fact, there are two of this Ace. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, you sell. One is on sale. Um, should I be purchasing one? Okay. So let me tell you. Um, let me just. Okay, so quick question about the two duct unit: Are the fourteen thousand two ducts actually separated from the cooling unit? Um, um, are the fourteen thousand BTU two duct venting AC units actually separating the heat air from the cooling unit? Okay. Um, I ask because I have had several customers tell me that they are, that the, let me just be more specific, the AC units are draining the room of air and CO2, and therefore CO2. In fact, there are two different versions of this AC you sell. One is on sale. Should I be purchasing one mm -hmm. over the other to get, the, to get that sealed room 
effect. Environment. Okay, yeah. yeah if gotcha, you have that gotcha. room effect, um, please advise because I sell a lot of these. <laughs> okay, so, dude, you're not the See, only one. See, that's what I was going to tell you is I'm actually... Go ahead, go ahead. You're not... Oh, so, okay, so it switched me. When I... Okay, so you're not the only one that uh, shows up. You're not the only one that's called with this problem. So let's ask. Okay. Let's ask because, listen, okay, if we cool. get a real answer, nobody will buy anybody but an ideal air AC unit again. You know what I, I mean? Right, like, right. Right. Because it works great. It keeps it cold. It works great, except for the CO2. Right. And I want to buy them. So I am more than happy to call my desk, you know, send an email to the guy at my distributor, Sunlight Supply, and ask a real question. Because, listen, for all I know, I'll, awesome. I'll buy 10 pallets here. I'll uh, seal them myself, and I'll sell them. You know what I mean? If that's what it takes. And, and absolutely. I'll yeah. buy one from you. Shit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. I totally get the point. That's how come I sell my Ultimate RO. Because you watch that video where I test the other ROs, and they're a joke with yep. three to one waste. And yep. then one of them had a switch where you could get even more wastewater. <laughs> <Right>. So <laughs> I just... I couldn't imagine. So you know what I mean. Like it's 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 an right. it's with it's with Absolutely. honest and earnest intent that I ask because this is what we need. And if they don't know what we need, let's tell them and let's get what we need, and then we'll sell the shit out of it because we'll let's advertise somebody, it. Right, right, yeah, right. Yeah, totally. That's why my mega meter, dude. <laughs> so I bought. Uh, we've been buying meters got at the store. Sorry, go on. Yeah, no, I, was, I got one of them, your mega meters. It was oh. awesome. I had a blue lab. It kept, it was working, but then it wouldn't. I had so many problems. Yeah, I bought one of those. I had no problems with it. I stick it in. I read it. Nice. Take it away. Put it away. I'll tell you the problem that I ran into at the store. See, there's a difference at the store, right? Because at the store, what I have to do is I have to buy every fucking product, sell it for six months, and see which one doesn't come back. And what I learned was right. all the meters that I bought from the all the meters from the name brand distributors, all the meters that I bought fell apart for my customers. Now, a lot of times customers would give up growing before the meters fell apart. But regardless, <laughs> the, uh, the meters were falling apart. So I've been selling the mega meter for about a year now. And here's what I've learned. About one in 200, somebody has a problem. I have more problems with my grow book like people with questions and stuff with the mega than the mega meter it turns out that in about seven right. months you buy a new probe it takes about seven months for the probe to be replaced that's when peak probe purchase <laughs> that's when peak probe purchase happens it's about seven months right at the end of seven months when yeah, we that's about uh, right about eight months yeah that's, that's... and it we get about i think i've had mine for probably six and a half months and had no problems with it yet yeah and I've been selling them for more than a year, and I don't get any returns. I probably get an, a 9 to 11% probe repurchase rate on the Grow Boss Mega Meter. In fact, uh, let me, as long as I've got all the capability. So I've got a Grow Boss Mega Meter. Which, which sounds very low, but which is really an awesome number for the person that makes the product because that means it works. Oh, um, Best part about this whole thing. Hey, can you hear me clearly from here? Absolutely. Oh, okay, good. Then my new mic equipment setup is working. Woo. Testing this shit out. Okay. All right. Fabulous. All right. So listen, I'm going to show you. Let's go. Let's go to the Grow Boss demo station. Okay. So listen, I know you guys laugh at me because you guys call me the ShamWow guy. But I do want to <laughs> point out that, well, you know. I, to some extent, I sort of am the sham wow guy, so I have to embrace it. But, you know, we've got, I've got a lot of people that come to the store that don't know what's going on, and I do have a lot of, I do we do have a lot of, there are a lot of questions and stuff. So, um, I just want to point out that uh, that it's nice to have like a little workstation so I can show you stuff. So. All right. I'm and, then, and let me say, man, I was going to say, boy, the shop's looking really good over there. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I've been working at it. 
It's funny because it's a hydro <laughs> store. It's like a hydro store. You don't really have to do a great job. Like I literally wrap the store in in panda paper, like trash bag in IKEA. I wrap the right. store in panda paper. Okay. <laughs> Grow Boss Mega Meter. There are a lot of meters that are $120 that do end up. Some of the dual ones cost me $120 at the store. You guys probably buy them for $150 online. I'm supposed to sell them MSRP for like uh, $179 or something, but it's a Grow Boss Mega Meter. $180, right? Yeah. So what notice the thing is what i did was we had to buy i bought like five different meters and hundreds of them and so the best part about this was after a while we learned that this is the one that never came back and it's a dual meter with big numbers listen there's a lot of over 46 right. year old growers you know what i mean so big numbers are nice on there but all you do is right, turn right. it on there you go turn it on there's your equipment you put it in and you get to read the number so it says dude it says 56, five, six. Now, this is an old thing that's, this is an old uh, measure thing that's been lying around that was dirty. I rinsed it off just now, but that would be 560 PPM because this meter goes up to 10,000. Right. So that's 560. You want to do pH, take it out of the water, press the pH button, count to three, put it back in the water. And it's super important. You got to know PPM. Everybody talks about pH, but I'll tell you guys, pH is meaningless. Pretty much all water can be watered with. Any type of city water, anything like that can be watered with. Um, but what you, uh, what you can't do is tell how much salt is in the water. That's the thing, and that's why you always need right. a PPM meter. I know you guys think pH and pH lockout and nutrient lockout, but pH lockout doesn't exist. Nutrient lockout doesn't exist. That is not the case it's always over oh shit throat punches tokyo oh that's the bud you're smoking uh okay yeah so that's that's uh listen i, I gotta tell you something you guys have been watching me for about four months now do this and this is today just now even though i even though i have to do this instead of a whatever it is instead of a lapel mic i finally got the phone call volume it occurred to me the other day, I lower the phone call volume until it matches my voice because I couldn't turn mine up anymore. So I lower the phone caller. You guys turn up yours, your end. I've got, dude, I have got my cameras in the store set up. I've got a walkabout camera. The store is done. Well, mostly done. We've got a little bit of painting and inventory to do. Oh, dude, my, I am, I mean, I am. You know what? You know what? We are. You know what? Store is we, looking good. Store yeah, you know is what? definitely looking good. We're going on tour. I'm taking you on a tour. It's looking in the a whole lot fuller. You know what I mean? It, it definitely looks a lot fuller. Oh, we're going on a just, we're, just from you know watching it from here. You know. We are. Uh, let's see. Let's make sure I've got my sound. I got you sound. Okay, so let's go on a tour of the neighborhood. Boom! Look at that. Advanced Nutrients has so many products. Look at, look at advanced nutrients with there's so many products. And I really, it is really confusing. I try to figure out, we've been trying to figure out how to do it. Okay, how to stock their product. But the reality is, I mean, look at their jungle juice. There's so many versions and their Scentsy Bloom. Oh my God, it drives me fucking nuts. And you have to have them all because somebody <laughs> wants everything. Okay. Right, there's a whole bunch. Somebody's going to want the one you ain't got. Oh, dude, that's what happened the other day. Okay. So there's my Botanicare, there's my uh, Fox Farm, all those nutrients. I've got, um, I've got new products like there's the the Titan burners. I've sold two burners since I started stocking them. So I got killer fans. Check it out. My walls are all getting. I got all that nice product on my walls, like uh, all organized now. Okay, there we go. My wander cam's new. So. <laughs> And then we got all the bulbs like, dude, I've got, I've got a lifetime of bulbs for my store, but here's my sweet security cabinet with more advanced nutrient shit in it. Oh my God. There's so much advanced nutrient shit. Okay. Oh, that was bush load. I started buying a lot of advanced. Oh, dude, there's there. Nobody markets like they do. They're the best marketing in the industry. I hope one day to do as good a job with my marketing as they do. They've got a few years on me, but I've been buying a lot of stuff online, like Bushload and like little packs of uh, of Forbid and Avid. I've been buying a bunch of stuff online, like uh, 
boom, check it out. I got a whole bunch of CO2s now. Ah, that is a used, I got a pair of those used kind LEDs. If you guys want to deal on those, I got a couple of LEDs. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, I see it. I got a TV in the far corner of my store that's the security cam, but on the weekends, I can turn it into the TV that I use for my show. I'm going to put another TV over there later. That way, when I walk around my store, I can show you. I can see what you guys are looking at with my wander cam. So right. I've got this nice little front area now that's, uh, okay, so I've got this nice little front area now that's, uh, okay, I'm trying to, I'm practicing on how to use it. Okay, there we go. I can see the TV over there. So I've got this nice <laughs> little front area right now. There's my CO2 exchange. The thing about the store is you got to right size it. If you remember, I used to have like 20 some CO2 tanks. Now we keep eight up front yeah. and Chuck just swaps them out. That... I got yesterday for 20 bucks. That's a brand new filter and a fan, but everything. Is got that a fucking fan and filter? 20 for bucks. 20 bucks? Yeah, but you have to own a hydro store to wow. get that deal. And you had to buy everything yeah, else that I was had to. Say, you ain't getting no deal. I sure don't get them. <laughs> yeah. And he also, a nice guy, was stuck, stuff was stuck outside. He also had this which I gave him 10 bucks for. Check this out. And the reason I gave him 10 bucks, I turned it on. All the bulbs seemed to work. But when you look at it, it turns out it was left outside and they all have to be cleaned and all the leaves and stuff. So either I'm going to sell this for 70 bucks uh. and just get make my 60 bucks. Throw a couple bulbs in there. Bulbs cost me four or five bucks. I sell them for 12, but they cost me four or five. Was that a bad boy? Um, no, this is just, uh, you know, this is probably the hydro farm. Uh, oh, you know what? I uh, bet okay. you it is because it's an active air fan and an active air filter. So it is a hydro farm kit, which makes this the, yeah, this is the like T5 it. deluxe from hydro farm. Now I remember buying these oh, okay, and okay. I don't know the difference between the deluxe and the not deluxe. Um, I think maybe the gauge of the metal is thicker, but I don't think it's a VHO over an HO. So that was, what I, and you, I got, got that you. for 10 bucks too. Of course I have to add bulbs. And if you want bulbs for five bucks, bucks, well, you got to add bulbs there. I mean, they cost me five Holy bucks. Holy shit! Well, you, I got to clean it up. You know what I mean? Yeah, I paid, yeah, but I paid almost, what, hell, almost $400 for my 12-bulb quantum T5. Okay, if you, okay, see this 12-bulb, see this, uh, this, uh, this is a 12-bulb 2-foot, two 2-foot two 12-bulb, no, 16-bulb. Okay, Dude, yeah, I got the 4-foot. Yeah, but that thing's like 350 bucks. Yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, I know. <laughs> I also, but it works, I, and I bought it because of the. I actually bought it because you know, I watch all your videos. So you know, I watched the video you did. I don't know last year or something on the the T fives and you know what I mean, the the tents and all that. And so I, I mean, I've seen how the coverage and how big it was. I just went out and bought one. Yeah, yeah. There comes a point. Listen, people spend. Dude, this is a thousand. This is a K five one thousand kind LED. You know what I mean? You can have that for 1100 bucks cash. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah, so for 1100 bucks cash for an LED versus a couple of hundred for a for a for um, a bad boy, it's an awesome deal. I also got check out these two And two I wouldn't bucks. trade it. I wouldn't trade it because I mean it doesn't really put out a whole bunch of heat. It, it lights up such an area. I mean, I wouldn't trade it to be honest with you. It works absolutely awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, and it's a VHO, so you get, that's why you made that heat comment, because you get 15% more light out of it. Yes. Okay, check this out. Yeah. I also got these two, this 4 foot 8 bulb and this 4 foot 8 bulb, and I got, the, and I got this hood, no bulb. I think I got them for like, I think I got them for like 80 bucks. I got, if you see that, here, check this one out. Oh, man. I got this duck silencer and that six inch hurricane super turbo, whatever that black one is, those two connected right there. Dude, I got that for 30 bucks. The guy needed gas money. Get but, out of here, man. That fan's $200 at least. I know, I know. I'll tell you that what. hurricane six inch fan's like 200 ain't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Totally. I but, mean, that's a badass fan. Them things ain't cheap. 
But that's just the cash price. I have to maintain a constant presence on Craigslist, right? I have to put my commercials right, right, right. on YouTube. I have to buy shit that I throw away. Just You remember a couple weeks ago I told you about the guy who was chicken scratching for all the shit he was trying to sell? Dude, I was going to buy that guy's new trans. <laughs> yeah, right, right yeah. it down. I was writing it all down. Yeah, chicken scratching it down. I, yeah, I was, yeah. I would have bought his nutrients just to throw him out the back so he brought everything else. <laughs> just throwing a hundred extra dollars at the total price of what he charged me, I would have done that just because. I mean, it wouldn't have been the best deal ever, but it still would have been a good deal. So, plus, I'm really, there's only like right, one right. or two of us that buy used anyway in town. And everybody shops everywhere. And for years and years and years, I have been training yep. the community. We buy used. Hey, give us a call. Come in, bring us your shit. If I don't buy it, nobody else will. You'll have to throw it away. That's literally what I tell them. Yes, That's sir. Bad. Okay. All right, I got a couple of things I got to do. I'm supposed to run a show here instead of just being self-indulgent. Is it was Mark, any... I appreciate it, my brother, man. The store is looking wonderful, bro. Looking like a million dollars, man. I appreciate the uh, compliments. Thanks so much. Have a good day. All right, I'm the girl boss. This is my hydro store. It's not really my hydro store. It's my former wife's hydro store. We call her the Lone Wolf. Lone Wolf. Um, yeah. So... This is we for you know for the last couple of years I was making videos here at the store, and now uh, the videos are done. So we switched it up. We made it look more like a store again, like I was just showing you. And if you're new to the channel, then uh, you don't know that. You can go back and watch the other shows. All right. So five six seven. You called me back. What can I do for you? Hello. Good morning. Yes, I got a quick question for you. Um. Like, I'm a new grower. I'm using a 1,000-watt quarter lux bulb, and I just finished my first grow. And I was pleased with the product, but it doesn't have a quite, like, loud smell to it, and I was wondering what I could do to improve that. Okay. First thing about smell is it's always the first thing that kills smell is heat. And it doesn't have to be temperature because, remember, Sorry, it has to be temperature, but not in the way you're thinking because there's two forms of heat in, to some extent. There is a wet bulb and a dry bulb temperature. A dry bulb temperature would you be stand, where you would be standing outside, it's 100 degrees, feels like 100 degrees to you, that's dry bulb temperature. You can work on the deck of a crab boat all night long. You're dead if you fall in the water in four minutes. Why? Because wet bulb is not the same as dry bulb. That's why your, the metal on your car is 140 when it's only 100 outside. So what you think, you're like, oh, my room's the perfect 78. Dude, your car could be 98 when it's 78 outside because your car absorbs the wavelengths of the light. So the first thing that always kills smell, and you started off with new grower, 1,000 watt light cow you know what i mean like that was a lot of light my friend so the question is what does the bud look like did the bud all green did you get those burnt tips did you get tell me a little bit about what the final product looked like i mean it was um a white russian strand so it was green with some orange with some orange hairs i had some nutrient burn <laughs> in the beginning but like with with my um and i have central air in my house but when i first started i just had a wing tipped with no hood so the light and the first day i ran it it was like 115 degrees inside my temp so i was like that's not going to be good so i actually went and bought a hood and a, a inline fan so with my light on, my temps are like 83, and I do it at night on a 12 from 9 p.m. to 9 a.m. And when the light is off, the temps inside the tent is like in 75, 74. And then I have some rotating fans in there. So, Okay, so let me ask you this. How long did you veg for? Six weeks. How long did you flower for? About nine, and I use the T5 fluorescent light to veg. Okay. And so how many bulbs, which T5 fluorescent, four-foot-eight bulb, what'd you do? 
Uh, it's a it's a four. It's a well, it's about four foot long. T5. How many bulbs? How many bulbs? Uh, it's about eight. Okay, so you got eight. a so you got a four hundred watt veg. So let me ask you: When you went into flower, did you turn your thousand down to six hundred? I don't. I don't. I can't do that on mine. So okay, what I did, I didn't run it for twelve hours. Like I like slowly introduced it to the thousand. I didn't just immediately put it in there. So I ran it for like eight hours, a couple of days, and then it took me like two weeks before I officially introduced it to like a twelve on, twelve off because okay. I couldn't control the water. Output. When you, when you introduce the full light, because I think I understand what you're saying. You didn't want to give it too much too quick, but I'll tell you, I don't. You should have never been at a thousand watt with a 400 watt veg. One is if you have a 400 watt veg, you have a 600 watt flower, because the first two, three, four weeks of flower, you'll still be at 400 watts. You'll shape the canopy and you'll widen it out. So let me ask you, what size pot were you in? When you started flowering, after six weeks of veg, what size pot were you in? Uh, I switched it to a five gallon. Okay. So the plants were small. Are you growing in a tent? Yes, a four by four by seven. Okay. So you're growing in a tent. You can only get the light so far away. They're in fives. How many plants did you have? Three. Well, I got to tell you, um, you know, let me give you, you know what, let me, this is, this is, okay, don't even, I, I totally got you on this. Check this out. Okay. So uh, let me, let me, uh, oh, here we go. Let me uh, pull up a video for you and I'll post it up and you'll be like, oh yeah. Um, 410, you got to call me back in a couple minutes. So give me a sec. Um, all right. Video manager. Um, I made, uh, I, I just want to, just so I can give you an example of, uh, of the relationship, because this is all, this is all a relationship between light and yield and space. And if you go, if you go too fast, see, you have, you have 400 in veg. And you've got too much in flour. I mean that. Okay, I'm nope. trying. I'm trying to find. Uh, okay, let's make sure I'm on the right channel. Video manager, videos. Okay, so I made a video specifically to show you guys. I mean, like about the relationship between the space and the light and the yield, because it, the most that you can grow with a 400 watt veg is a two by four, two feet deep canopy. Then when you go into flower, if you take your two by four, two feet deep and you stretch it out, you get a four by four, one foot deep. See, the thing is when you do a four by four, one foot deep, you have to, uh, it's 400 watts. So you're just going to change the shape of the canopy Okay, marijuana garden rescue. I got to remember that for next time. Okay, so let me do this. I always take the video and I post uh, current vid. So here is uh, the video. And I just want to point out that there's this relationship between the size of the plant. Okay, so here's the part where the bucket's coming up. The size of the plant is related to plant count. Okay. Just got to wait for the bucket to come up. Okay, and I'm on a little bit of a lag as well. Sure, sure. And you can watch it later, and it'll come across with my voice and everybody else but you and I are current right now. Boom. You know, there's 10-gallon buckets. There's literally two plants on that 4x4 four four tray. So I just want to point out that this is a 10-gallon bucket, and there are two plants so when you look at the plants in this video, you have to tell me that your canopy was as big as this. Because if you put 400 watts worth of canopy, oh, you know what else I have? I got, oh, uh, Canadian Sean. I think that's who 
made this for me. I think I remembered who it was. Quinnis, Quinnis, Quinn, anyway, Canadian Sean um, is who helped me do this. And uh, book picks. Here is Blam Paint. My voice. Okay. So I just want to point out that if you have a 400 watt light, you get to do this row. All right, you get to do this row right here. The thing is, when you go into flower, if your, if your canopy is two feet tall and you make it two feet wide, it is now only one foot tall. That's like shifting gears. You are now in the next gear at a lower RPM. So your power band has changed. But more importantly, what hasn't changed is the size of your canopy even though the total volume of your canopy even though the dimension has changed the volume of your canopy has not changed and because the volume of your canopy has not changed then your job is to continue giving it the same light why because it's the same plant now after your plants grow a little taller and they get used to being shorter you would then increase the light to 600 but your light, if you go from four to six, let's say two weeks later, you're going to have to take 600 watts worth of light and move it a foot higher. You're going to have to go up a foot, right? I mean, if you're going to increase the light and the canopy is the same, you got to go a little further away. Then over the next six weeks, your plants will grow into the space because the last thing you want to do is, is have your... Uh, typed it wrong hang on the last thing you want to do um, is have your plants do anything like this give me um, I got oh this is not okay garden rescue my videos old okay so yeah, here, when I first start, when I first put them in there, the, the light was about four foot away because I didn't want it too close to risk burning them. And then as they grew, like I gradually moved it closer, but my the light was never within two feet of the of the canopy. I always gave it like the last four weeks of flower, it was two two feet away. Yeah, see, and I know you think that's awesome. However, I'm going to show you this. Okay. Look at how close those buds are to the light. Uh, just check that out. And I'm going to show you that while I am so smooth that I'm going to pull up this pick. And then I'm going to smoothly switch without anybody noticing. Here's a pick where these plants are five feet tall. And I would just like to point out that these plants are 10 week veg, five feet tall, and the light is still further away than the plant is tall. Uh, frankly, two feet is insane. Just so you know, in terms of growing, here's a picture where these plants are three plants for two lights. You have three plants per one light. Mm -hmm. These are, these are, and then I'm going to show you this picture where here's another one where there's 15 plants so per two, two feet light. Is too close. Two feet is too close by three feet and seven weeks. You didn't have enough plant to ever turn up to a thousand. Think about a thousand like sixth gear. Every 200 is, or every 200 watts is a gear. You have 400 watts in veg. That's first and second. You went into, mm -hmm. you went into flower at literally like 800, a thousand watts. I mean, you went from second to fourth and it doesn't work like that. I mm -hmm. mean, why don't you start out on sixth? I mean, red, warm, start your car, warm it up. You know you're going to get on the freeway, so just put your car in sixth. Why don't you just start in second? Why don't you go from first to third? I mean, you can just go down and up. Why don't you do that? Because it doesn't work like that even a little bit. See my point? Yep. Okay. So what I would yeah, like to I point... I went to the garden store and let them sell me what they sold me. Right. And that's because I'm the only one that says it the way that I say it. Because here I am, listen, I'll tell you the truth. Growers don't work at hydro stores. Growers don't work at hydro stores. 
They can't. First off, they would be like, oh, this is how I do it. And you can't tell 100 people a week that you're growing dope. Second, growers don't work at hydro stores because they're making fucking money. You can't can't hire a grower at a hydro store because two weeks out of every other month, they disappear. They get their harvest and they go and they get their money. But I'll tell you, when you're good, when you're good at doing this, there isn't much work. You don't have to move the light. And I'll tell you why. Because if you put a 1,000 watts, 7 feet over your plants at the start of veg, over. So let's say your veg was 400 watts. You go into flower. You put 700 watts at the start of flower. Sorry, you put 1,000 watts at 7 feet at the start of flower. All right. You know what I mean? Like, it's listen, flower is two months. 1,000 watts is... 80 bucks a month, 70 bucks a month, two months is 140 bucks, 250 bucks to grow a pound of cannabis. Who the fuck cares about throwing a thousand Watts worth of light seven feet away? But that's not the type of people that grow cannabis. Is it the type of people that grow cannabis want something right now? They think they're going to get something for nothing. And it's just like Phil on the Cornelius Marie used to say, everybody wants the big time. All right, listen, I appreciate the call. Thanks. Everybody wants the big time, but nobody wants to work for it. And I'll tell you, that is exactly why I don't hire somebody to come in and fix my show just because there's a problem. It is exactly why my show and my show, if you're watching the show, click the like button, do the thumbs up. Um, You know what I mean? Like, I'm supposed to tell you guys to, I'm supposed to take a minute and promo my own show. Why? Because I wasn't thinking about it for the longest time because listen, the show for me is just one of many different components to, uh, to, to my business and having to tell you guys to click, listen, I'm the only one doing what I'm doing. Um, in fact, here is my business review. I just, oh, nope. I just posted uh, nope, I can't. No, no, this should be right. I should be able to do this. Hang on one sec. Post. Oh, it's not going to let me do it. Bah, why doesn't it let me do it? So I got my, here is my Google business review. Okay, so let's do this. So I click there. I go to that website. Hang on one sec. So I'm supposed to take a minute because you're already, you're already on here and I'm supposed to, Tell you like the but like the show. Fuck, it's not gonna let me do that. Okay, so like the show, love the grow boss. No, I'm just... Um, four to seven reviews. Maybe I can I can click here and maybe this page will let me. Uh, oh, it says edit my review. See, I think that's because. Anyway, Las Vegas hydroponics. And then you'll see Henderson Hydroponics. It's Las Vegas Hydroponics. It's actually funny what I do because all my competitors' names are in my store. So it's Las Vegas Hydroponics. So I'm supposed to tell you about stuff that's going on in the future. One of the things that's going on in the future is I'm going to start doing a show in the store a night uh, during the week. Chuck's here. I got Chuck a set of headphones cleverly concealed in my computer back here for the show. I've got Chuck a set of headphones. And so we're going to start doing a show. Maybe we'll do it like 6 p.m. or something like that a couple nights a week. Listen, as long as I'm doing the show and as long as I got this shit in the back of my store, you know what I mean? Like I could, I could tap it to, I could tap, I could hit that. I could tap it to any extent I want. In fact, Cannabis Information Network, boom. I started producing. We were talking, remember last time about Cannabis Information Network. I actually produced it, produced it, produced it. I actually created a couple of videos that it was a stores and a hydro store, a store and a hydro for stores and vendors only on that channel. So that's a little different. That's Cannabis Information Network. 904, good morning. Tell me all about it. Hi, I just have a question. Yes. Um, I'm trying to um, finish up my product um, in the curing process. And what are good pointers? Okay. So there's two components to, there are two components, 410, you'll have to call me back. Sorry. (coughs) Excuse me. There are two components to uh, curing. And I just want to define the terms as there is drying and there's curing. And as long as everything went well, 
You didn't overheat the plants like we were just talking to the last caller. In all cases, he had too much light. And so because of there was too much light, there was too much heat. Even though his room temperatures were down, there was too much heat. So as long as you get to the end where everything looks good, you might lose the smell a little. It might come back a little. But what you're looking to do is dry the small amount of water out of it first. That's where you hang it or you put it on a rack or something. You know, you cut the buds off, depending on how you handle your bud. Sometimes there's so much you have to cut branches off like the Bushmaster does. And he hangs them from, uh, from clips in, you know, from his Ikea clips in Bushmaster and 99 plants. But there was a lot of plants. Sometimes it's only a couple of plants. So you might take the time to literally knock a branch off, cut all the leaves off, and then cut the buds off. If you do that, you're going to put them on a drying rack and hang them. The important thing to understand is that there's water in three parts of the plant. There is intracellular water. There is intracellular, extracellular water, intracellular water, and then vascular water. So there are different water, there's water in, there's fluids and liquids in different parts of the plant. Your job is to first put them on a rack or hang them, whatever you are. That's the initial dry. That takes the water out of it. Then you do something like you put it in a bag or you put it in a jar, and this brings the humidity in it out. So the intracellular water now moves into the extracellular space. Now you're starting to burp the bag or open the bag. And if there's a lot of budge, you might go ahead and put it back on the drying rack for a couple more days. Once you get that part done, you, you have to look if they're still, if they're still on the sticks, if they're still on the stems and stalks, you sort of have to gauge by breaking them how much water is left in the vascular space of the stems and stalks. If there's still a lot of water, you may trim some of the stalks away, depending on how you initially trimmed it and dried it. Not everybody trims it all the, the leaf all at once. They usually go ahead and take off the fan leaves. Then later they might take off the sugar leaves. They might do it all at once. They might leave the, do it all at once, then leave the bud on the stick. They might do it all at once and then knock the bud off the stick. Bah! All, all, in all cases, however, what you end up with is the bud. And at some point, you have to determine the humidity, the, the total humidity, both what's inside the cells and what's out, because without. Because once you get to that point where you don't really have to dry it anymore, but if it got any drier, it would get too crumbly. You know what I mean? Like, so you have to, uh, you have to find that zone where you can where you can then let it store. Now, what I just talked about was drying. Now let's talk about the curing because there's a couple of ways to dry it. Okay, so here's a bunch of curing products. Like you can put them in a jar because once it's dry enough, you're not always sure if there's any humidity left. So you'll open up these jars with those flip top lids and you'll, uh, and you'll let them dry. But then there's things like those air outs. Like if you look at this stuff, like this product right here, this removes oxygen air out. Don't think this is the same thing as this, which is the Integra or the Bovida Boost. This maintains a current humidity by absorbing and releasing moisture. This, however, removes specifically the oxygen molecule. Why? Because oxidizers are made out of oxygen. And that's what deteriorates the bud or degrades the quality. That's why there's vacuum seal bags. Because if you can take the oxygen out, so what you do is you throw a little O2 in the oxygen seal bag, and then you seal it. Now, once you start putting the product in the jars and you let it sit, that's curing so your your okay. you see what i'm saying like your essential idea is to separate the two components see what i'm getting at yes now okay. i have one more question okay what what excuse me what causes like a hayish smell oh the color i i describe it as the color brown i mean it smells like the color brown okay <laughs> a hayish smell is usually too much heat and I'll tell you, it's because the scent molecules are the, the scent glands. And when we look at, let me, uh, I'll pull up a picture here for you. When we look at, 
Uh, let me do this. So I'll show you. We'll look on a uh, canna cannabis leaf uh, close up. I should probably look at these pictures before I just put them up on the internet because who knows what's going to show up. Okay. Okay. So let's, okay. These are cannabis leaf trichomes. Trichome. Oh, I didn't put a space, but I bet it knew. Okay. Trichome close up. Okay. So here's a damn good picture. We've probably all seen this one. There are, see this right here? That is not the same thing as of this. This is the THC that the mouse is sitting on, that the hand is sitting on top. See the cap, the cap on top of the gland. That is the THC right there. That cap is exactly what those bubble bags are supposed to separate out, right? That cap, depending on the purity of the bag that you separate, that cap is what you want. So let's, oh, look at this. They got arrows. Somebody's got arrows. Perfect. Makes it even easier for me. I'm just suggesting that there are different trichomes. Then, and some of them are more sensitive than others. When they talk about hanging your butt upside down and to drain everything out, I mean, technically, you would have to drain something out down the branch into the bud. You know what I mean? And into that red cap right there. Because, listen, if you drain something in the leaf, who the fuck cares? It's the leaf. And if you drain something into the butt, it don't really matter. Why? Because the only thing with THC in it is that little cap on top of that little stalk. But those aren't the only things on there. So when we're talking about curing, we're talking about the aging of the THC specifically. So when we talk about the aging of the THC, people always tell me, oh, I've heard this does this and this does that. And I want more CB this and more TH that, or I want less and less, whatever it is, whatever it is. All I'm suggesting is it all happens in that tiny little cap on the end of that tiny little stalk that's microscopic in size. So if you're specifically looking for an effect, what you would have to do is you would have to take careful documentation and pictures. You would have to harvest two weeks before you flower, one week before you finish, when you finish, one week after, and one week beyond that. Then you would have to divide each one of those up, put one in a dark room, and hang the other one upside down to see if anything really happens. All I'm suggesting is they don't hang bananas upside down. You know what I mean? They don't hang oranges yep. upside down. When, the Mexi when, when we get our tomatoes in Walmart from Mexico, they don't pick them ripe or they'd be rotten by the time they got here. So when we talk about curing, we're talking about the chemical conversion of THC and cannabinoids and CBDs and all of these things from one thing to another. That's, I, I can't tell you which one's your magic in terms of that. You know what I'm saying? Like some people like aspirin. Some people like um, uh, Tylenol, which is ibuprofen. And some people like naproxen. It's all NSAIDs. They're all non-steroidal anti-inflammatory products. However, they're not the same product. Some people like one type of fake sugar and some people like another type of fake sugar. I don't even know that. Stevia. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, all I'm saying is that in terms of how it affects you, I can't get you there, but I can point out that when you burn off the blues and the yellows, it smells like hay. <laughs> So All right. I, Thank you so much. And I love you guys. You're pretty funny. Keep it, keep it up. <laughs> I appreciate the call. Thank you so much. And congratulations on your success because uh, if your bud smells like, hey, I know you finished. You know what I mean? And if you finish this time, 410, hang on one sec. If you finish this time and it smells like, hey, all you have to do is back off your lights and you'll do even better next time. Plus, you'll top it. You'll control the canopy a little better and you will do better next time than you did this time. You know what I mean? Okay, 410, you've been so patient. What can I do for you? Well, I just wanted to kind of comment on this whole subject. I, um, I totally agree with everything that you said about the light totally destroy heat really i think does take out a lot of smell 
but I just harvested my second grow and I got a really, really good smell on it. But the interesting thing is like the difference that I did was in drying and curing. I took a really long time to dry this bud and I dried it in for over 12 days in complete darkness with like cold, cold temperatures. It was like 65, 70 degrees the whole time. And that to me, I don't know if that's the only thing that made a difference. Maybe I just grew it better. But my light, I feel like, was still too close. And when I first harvested, I was like, everything looked really good, but it just had that hay smell that everybody's talking about. And I was freaking out. But when as soon as I, like, as soon as it was done drying and after I had trimmed it, the smell just kind of started to come. And as soon as, like, I had jarred it for, like, one or two days, it was, like, amazing. So I think that maybe, like, and on my first harvest, it was literally, like, a three-day dry or a four-day dry because I had the humidity at, like, 40 percent or something so i think humidity and like monitoring everything really carefully and trying to do it as slowly as possible right is makes a difference too okay so you're suggesting cold air and scientifically what do we know about cold air because the other component that you gave us was a warm air I, su I suspect warm air at 40% humidity. So you have put us in a position where we know cold air is dry air. And if you ran it through an AC, we know it's dry air because ACs, ACs dump humidity. They run the water out the bottom, right? So you take the water out of the air, cold, but cold would tend to dry it more. But then cold would also slow the molecules down. So the question is, is if it is and you say monitoring and i'd like to change the word monitoring from because monitoring let's say you monitored it it was 40 percent, but that didn't work so monitoring isn't the adjective that you wanted the verb that you wanted i think that the adjective you know but i think what we're saying is we have to what we have to do and i'll tell you why i'm the grow boss because I, not only do I know how to grow because so many people come through my store i get all these facts that we get to coordinate so one of the things that I've been able to do throughout my history in this industry is I've got, let's see, I've got 200 of you listening. So the cure is somewhat subjective. Hell yeah, everything. So listen, I got Pitbull Syndicate says exactly. Take your time to cure. 70 degrees is not cold in their opinion. So cure a month or six. Now, wait a sec, last name change. Let's be clear. He said drying, and there is a difference between drying and curing. Curing is the conversion yeah. of chemicals from one thing to another. That's the curing. That's ripening in terms of tomatoes. When starch converts to sugar, that's ripening. In our world, it's curing. Curing is the conversion of one chemical to another. But don't be confused, that's not drying. So the caller is saying that <laughs> my weed stinks all the time all right that doesn't help this conversation jack officer okay um hang till the twigs snap not bend okay but that's but see now you're drying for 12 days if you hang your um camera camp camera hey camera if you're hanging from uh if you're hanging until the stick dries, remember, the stick is vascular. That's the last thing to evaporate. If you put your bud in the open air until the stick breaks, the rest of the bud is going to be really dry. That's why when Yeah, you I jarred it before it quite broke. I jarred it like when it was about to like maybe like it was still bending kind of stiff but not totally and to monitor humidity I kept my buckets in the tent while they were drying and I kind of just like watered them one time to get it like super humid. So when I started drying, it was like almost 70% humidity and it went down to like 45 or 50 in the end. But that was how I kept the humidity up even with the AC blasting as I just left six or eight buckets with water in them in soil in the tent. Okay. I right, listen. I appreciate the call. I'll keep, I'll, we'll keep talking about it, but, uh, but let me uh, let me make some of the let me read some of the comments that are going along, and let me also say that, dude, that's a lot of variables that you didn't include in the first part. I mean, like, listen, <laughs> if you grew great, bud, it's tough. It, it's tough to cure it wrong. But what we're talking about here is drying it to x x x x percent. 
So let's start with, we, there's three different parts of the plant. That's why people dry the bulk of it by hanging it. I mean, the only way we can have this discussion is if we define terms. And the more terms that we define um, together, whether you guys agree with me or not, call in and tell me, post it up here. All I'm suggesting is, I think what Chimera is saying is, then cure burp. I think what we're saying here is, there's an initial dry, there's a, there, the dry, it, Okay. Okay. I think I know what I have to do here. And then, okay. So we just do, we just do this. Okay. Let's do this and let's just start with a timeline. I mean, like, you know, you guys, you know, you chime in, please. You know, that's what, um, we got the, uh, that's what I got this live chat for. So you can just bust balls on me even harder, quicker. There you go immediate gratification okay so let's say that we're talking about um drying is this entire length of this is drying and then we'll move it into so this is this is how i define things when i do stuff just so you guys know i mean it takes a minute um you know you sort of have to work out details these things might overlap i don't know so let's start your humidity is too damn high. Takes like six months to smell dank. No, see, Jamon, hey Moon, no. It doesn't take six months to smell dank because the comment above you is telling you it stinks the whole way. Listen, I wouldn't sell carbon filters if it didn't smell like skunk from about day 10. I mean, sometimes it goes away and comes back and sometimes you can smell other things like when it really starts flowering and really toward the end, there are these ethylenes, the polyethylenes, that, the many ethylenes that come off the plant. You can smell what she's doing. All right. 313. Good morning. What can we do? What can I do for you? Hi. Uh, I was checking out the door, man. I, I think you're breaking up. All right. Now, if you're going to have to do something to call me back. Okay. So there's an initial hang dry. And then let's say that there is a uh, burp dry. Okay. 30 minutes in the oven. Bah! All right. Okay. Let's try this again. What are you thinking? Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Can you? Okay, cool, bro, boy. Yeah, I was just saying, man, I, uh, the store looks great like that, man. I like that table you got. Thank you. I appreciate that. What do you think about my uh, QVC thing? Oh. QVC? Yeah, okay, let me give you, <laughs> let, me, let me tell you, you know, what I'm, you know what I'm talking about, right? The QVC network? Okay. Yeah. Let me, uh, let me, all right, we'll get back to the drawing and curing thing, but as long as I got you on the phone, and you were thinking, you were talking to me about this. Let me, uh, let me show you. No, no, this is a different caller. I, I, this is a different caller. I, I just called. I, uh, I didn't have no curing question. Yeah, I know. But I wanted, as long as you were telling me about my store, I wanted to ask you oh, okay. what sure. you thought about this idea. Because uh, sometimes when I ask the customers, they, uh, they hang out for a while. So as long as I got you guys on the show, I figured, uh, you know what I mean? When the call's over, the call's over. Um, <laughs> did you just, right. oh, you can't see me, but I like literally just had to reach back all the way to get like literally the very last root riot out. Okay. All right. So I'm just, I just want to collect <laughs> a couple of things here because I was thinking Okay, so my show's a little different than other shows. Like, I have a store, so I tend to, like, maximize what I can do in a store. And, you know, a lot of people, everybody can show you cannabis, and the more they listen, the, the better they get. And you see the emails that I get, and people are talking about the, uh, you know, me helping them. So, but on the back end of this, one of the things that I do is I sell stuff. That's how... I get away from it in a way that nobody else can because, I mean, you know, you can make a video about cannabis, but, you know, there just comes this point where everybody's got videos about cannabis, but I've got the book and this platform. So here's my idea. I think, 
I'm going to start to teach people how to clone and how to, um, and how to, like, I'm just going to bring in a plant, set it in front of a camera, do it straight up QVC style. And, oh, dude, I think I'm so clever. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know I'm going to get a lot of information off that table, man. I know I am. Man. Oh, so I think that I should be able to sell, like, whether it be, whether you buy, like, the 20, rep okay, so this is my QVC idea. So whether you buy 20 replacements, a 50 count replacement plug and the light. Okay, so you can see I don't have enough table here. All right, so I don't have enough table. So this, oh man. All right, so, all right, so everybody has to put up with me for a sec. So this is my big QVC idea. All right, let me one sec here. I just got to. Ha, I just have to see how good I got with my computer. I can fix this stuff pretty quick, boss. Okay, so, oh, dude. All right, I just love being able to work with computers. Okay, so this goes back. This comes forward. This should shrink. Okay, all right. And that's okay. So for the moment, I'll just let it go like this. But I think I should be able to. So what I do is I sell information, right? That's how what I do because I'm in a unique position. I'm the grow boss. I have a store. Anybody can set up a garden in their house, but I'm in a unique position to sell product. Now, one of the things I hate doing, I hate selling one bottle of shit at a time because everybody can do that. So I'm thinking I put together a kit. I bring in a plant, we chop it up, we make videos, I get you the Clonex solution, we get you the Clonex solution and the Clonex rooting gel, you get, you get your, you get your two foot, see I gotta get better at this, you get your two foot one bulb, you get your Mondi, humidity dome, you get a 50 count root riot, you get a 50 count root riot starter plugs. You get Mondi trays and Mondi inserts. And in the deluxe kit, you can even buy the super sprouter heat mat if you're in a cold climate. So I think I'm going to yeah. start selling yeah. kits. See what I'm saying? Like, yeah. I, I, and then I can the throw kit, in a mega meter where with it's that. At, man. Yeah, listen. Yeah, man, the kits is where it's at. I think you had said. There's the bonus. And if you buy right now, instead of this meter, for $79.99.99.95, you can get it for $79.99.99.94. Right? <laughs> yes, yes. I like that. I got a lot. Oh, come on. You're breaking up again. Go back to wherever it was you were, because I was having fun with you. Bah. Go back where you were, so I can hear you. All right, call me back. Okay, so that was my idea. Those are, um, yeah, see, great, Nate. That's what I was talking about. Like, I can sell kits. You know what I mean? Like, I can sell education. I can literally open up five bottles of Botanicare. <clears throat> we can mix gallon after gallon after gallon. I can show you how to use that specific part product and the results with my mega meter. Boom. Run the commercial, sell the kit with my books, everything else. Come, You know what I mean? Like, God, I just don't want to put one bottle in a bag and have to ship it. Oh my God. That's why when I was talking to you guys earlier about like the cannabis information network. Yeah. See, okay, so Denali, you like that. Um, yeah, if you fail cloning, give up at all. Um, I, I'm just saying, like, I, I think that, I think sort of that's what, oh, dude, this, oh, 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 I think this is my, uh, I think this is 313, you're going to have to wait. Um, good morning, afternoon, or evening from where, where are you calling from? I'm calling from the Netherlands. I so thought it's, that uh, was it's evening you. over here. Good yeah, evening. It is. Good evening. So I'm Barry, and we're going to talk uh, a little bit about uh, legislation in uh, Europe. Oh, I lost you. No, no, I'm here. 
Ah, yeah, there you are. Okay, okay, no, I was listening to you. Okay, so quick introduction. Um, this individual reached out to me through email. <coughs> Excuse me. He liked what I was talking about, and he wants to come on and tell us something about legislation legislation in Finland. Um, I think you had made the comment about the terror stabbing attack in Finland the other day, and of course... It, it, you never put your hands on other people. You're never allowed to affect people in a negative way. And so terrorism is just one of those things that I, I, I feel for you, brother. I, there, I don't know what to offer you other than it's just one of those things. Sorry for you. Well, I'm, I'm not from Finland. I'm from the Netherlands, but cl close enough, I would say. Okay, so what can I do from the legislation? What can you tell us about legislation so in the Netherlands? Well, the, a couple of weeks ago, somebody was on the show and they were talking about why do EU growers not know how to grow yet, which, which is kind of what I want to explain. I'm from the Netherlands, so we're going to keep it kind of Dutch centric. So well, I know what I'm talking about. But um, in 1972, there was a report released uh, that pretty much said cannabis is the same as alcohol and tobacco. This sparked the Dutch government to uh, put in, uh, in effect legislation in 1976 that uh, legalized the sale of cannabis. Now, legalized is kind of, it's still a criminal offense to uh, own it. So it's, it's kind of, it's legalized, but not really. In the Netherlands, we call it gedoogbeleid, which means basically the police looks the other way when they see you walking uh, somewhere with a joint. Um, there's a couple of caveats. Uh, the coffee shops are the, the selling points in the Netherlands for cannabis, but a coffee shop can only uh, sell about uh, five grams per person. They can only have uh, stock uh, of 500 grams. So they, they can only have 500 grams of cannabis in the coffee shop at a time, which is not that much if you're selling five grams per customer. Uh, a coffee shop is not allowed to uh, cause problems in the neighborhood they're in. They're not allowed to sell hard drugs. They're not allowed to uh, sell soft drugs to minors. Uh, they're not allowed to advertise, which is another big problem for coffee shops. And they're not allowed to be within 250 meters of a school. So that's that's basically the, the basic rules. But here comes, here comes the problem with uh, the legislation in the Netherlands. The front door of a coffee shop is legal. The back door isn't. Meaning coffee shops can sell cannabis, but they can't legally buy cannabis. They're not, they're not allowed to. They have to buy from a criminal element because growing cannabis in the Netherlands is illegal and selling ca uh, cannabis commercially is illegal. So the commercial growers are all illegal growers. They're in... Uh, in uh, buildings hidden away somewhere they're in in the backs of stores and they're in the backs of uh, regular businesses they're in little uh, attics of people's homes those are all commercial growths but you can't actually sell it so they have to do all of that with cloak and dagger techniques you know which is kind of the, the problem here because they can sell it but they can buy it uh, and or the, grow the problem it. with that is or, or grow it, yeah. Even even for a home grower, it's a problem because you're allowed to grow five plants, but basically you can only grow that outside because if you have more than two technical means of growing cannabis, meaning you have say a tent and a light, that's that's two already, you're illegal because now you're you're using technical means to grow it. So that that's a, that's a problem, and it's a, it's a big problem because it means that the 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 coffee shops still have to buy weed from criminals because people who do that, who grow stuff, are criminals. There's no other element that can grow legally. So the only people that can grow are, are criminals. You know, it's, it's your biker gangs and your, uh, your, uh, your drug gangs and all, all that kind of stuff. So that, that's kind of the funny thing. So that's why, why the, when we talk about growing and the, the EU growers must know what to grow. Yeah, we know how to grow, only we can't show you how to grow. We're not allowed to grow, so we can't show you how to grow. And even then, uh, people producing cash crops don't really want to invest in new techniques. They want to use what they're using. They want to use their HPS, 
and their CO2, and that's what they use. So they want to use their uh, their nutrients that they're, they've been using for years because it works well and it produces crop for them. So they, they can't experiment with stuff because they have to produce money to be able to grow. Now, the, the, the average grower that uh, commercially grows in the Netherlands usually has not one or two grows, but is growing, say, four or five grows. Because for every grow you have, uh, for every two grows you have, you stand to lose maybe a grow, maybe two grows. So you have to have multiple grows because cops will bust you, which means you have to have a crop going somewhere else or you'll lose too much money and you won't be able to grow again. So that's that's kind of the, the problem with the, the drug law in the Netherlands at the moment. And there 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 has been an amendment to the law uh, this year. Uh, I believe it was around March, but it still makes it illegal for you to grow in a, in a large scale. So that's that's really the problem with uh, with growing in the EU. And it's pretty much the same. I looked up Finland just before uh, or just after the show started because someone from fin Finland was online and they, they are not allowed to use uh, cannabis except for medical purposes. So that's there's no that's why you hear a lot that people from, say, France or Belgium, they all come to the Netherlands to buy their weed because they can buy weed legally in the Netherlands, but they can't buy it legally in their own uh, their own countries. In terms of the legality that you discussed, that seems mm -hmm. a lot like it is in the United States. Like we have Mexican cartels that, you know, and we have Asian. Uh, are they triads? Is that a? gang or is that what you call asian yeah, cartels asian mafia and mexican mafia there we go mafia is like general term so we have nationalist mafias that grow drugs and i mean that grow it and sell it too that's i think listen i'd be legalizing everything i mean you could legalize cocaine i still wouldn't do it you know what i mean like i mean yeah. anymore, i mean anymore but so um i'm just suggesting that that your illegal busts and the amount of times that you get busted versus grows sounds a lot like the risk that we all face whether it be you know people from my customers or you know mm -hmm. other nationality gangs i mean in terms of legality that's something that everybody has to fight but you got to admit you know here in the united states like listen man they don't have menus like this with prices they don't look the other way like brown paper bags for alcohol you know what i mean uh -huh. like i should probably be smoking this bong out of a brown paper bag that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna the grow boss brown paper bag bong <laughs> 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 because if you put yeah. it in a paper bag that makes it okay to get drunk and stupid in public you were saying that they treat it like alcohol listen what i think you uh -huh. meant was is they treat it in terms of 18 year olds and you know like limits on you know like quantities and yeah. age like alcohol like that rather yeah. than yeah so yeah. i yeah i totally see your i totally see your point on that yes yeah and, and the problem is there's there's two cities in the netherlands that i know of where you can grow medically if you have your medical license to grow cannabis the the problem with that is however that if you live in a rental and the rental company finds that you're growing cannabis, you're going to get kicked out of your house because you're still officially not allowed to grow cannabis, even though the city you're living in allows you to grow it. Oh, my God. Humanity just boggles my mind. The amount, listen, once you make a rule on something, you always have to rule on that. That's why it's best to leave people generally the fuck alone and give them guidelines and structure. Because the more rules you make, the more rules you gotta make. Oh my god. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my and god. It drives me usually, fucking nuts. It's usually the commercial go grows going wrong that give home grows a bad, uh, bad name because there's a lot of fires in cannabis grows. I mean, you, you gotta. You got to have a little attic room filled with plants. You're sticking a big CO2 burner in there. You burn a house down, that gives every grower a bad name. So now the home grower that is doing it without causing any uh, harassment to their neighbors, you know, without causing smell and all that stuff, you're giving them a bad name because those neighbors now fear for their lives because they think their house is going to go up in smoke. Okay, so I'm going to give you an example. Here's some random video I just pulled up of 
I don't know if it's the right video yet, but I, I'm just going to, I'm going to use, oh, dude, Jeremy, love the, love the country, love America, government's wrong direction. Okay, Amsterdam at night, red light direction. Let's talk about porn for a sec. Let's talk about regulating porn. Let me tell you, they find one adult worker, dude, no, let me take this a step back. I use the word porn, but let me adult industry because there's no disrespect here in the united states there's a problem in the adult industry somebody gets an std they shut all of simi valley and northridge down you know what i mean like the entire friggin adult industry is shut down it's so much news it's on the news and they're like oh look how quick we react listen they sell sex in Amsterdam. They sell sex in everywhere, everywhere. I'm just suggesting that I think that these people, I think that these adults, these sex workers, they call them sex workers. I think that these sex workers are well tested. You know what I mean? They like, I think they have a routine. I don't think it's just like you come in off the street and you hump them bareback. You know what I mean? Like, I, I think it's, in a, it's regulated. Yeah, it's regulated, right? You probably have to hump them through. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, I, who knows? They probably have special rubbers over there that are like three times thick. You know what I mean? Like, I have no idea, but they have a menu for the sex workers. I assume that looks something like the menu for cannabis. All I'm suggesting yeah, is... No. All I'm suggesting is that in terms of the way we spend our money in the United States, in, in all governments, the more laws you make, the more laws you must make. Once you make a law on the topic, you must continue to make laws and continue to forever make rulings about laws. That's why the best governments, like the best leaders, they give you guidelines. They give you a vision. They allow the population to make their decision such that, listen, they don't mind doing sex. Would they do something else? Yeah, but they don't want to die because of it. So here they are figuring out ways to protect themselves. All I'm suggesting is that adults, <laughs> it's too many laws that the government makes. It's too much money that they spend. And if you look down every one law, it costs a billion dollars worth of incarceration or legal mm -hmm. fees oh my god oh my god well, there's they've got helicopters flying around in the netherlands to find grows so there's a helicopter flying overhead to see if they can find your grow they use infrared cameras and stuff like that it's it's ridiculous there's so much money spent on trying to find grows it's easier to just regulate it and legalize it oh wait 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 it's not just better you just have to remember that it's technically five times better because what we look at is a a multiplication of money it's easy to think about it in terms of cause and effect but one of the things we have to always look at is we have to look at how did we get from the cause to the effect and from the cause to the effect is is the cost of helicopters the pension of the men that die in helicopters the cost of fire because you don't regulate the industry and it's an illegal grow the cost of incarceration the cost of lives the cost of effort the opportunity cost of all of those fantastic people not working toward a better tomorrow and cr trying to crush drugs that don't have anything to do with their business and then those same fucking people are the ones that own the facilities sorry that's probably yeah. the united states i don't know about you out there but well the S somewhat similar. I mean, there, there is, uh, I think there's one company in the Netherlands that is allowed to grow medical cannabis and they do stuff to, to the buds to make sure that they're not, the, the buds don't go over 15% THC and what they do to the buds is what most people don't like and why they don't want to smoke it. Because I hear, I, I, this is only what I've heard. I mean, that's, that's what you can read online, but they use radiation and stuff like that to get the THC levels down. And I don't want to smoke that stuff. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Let me ask you that again. They use radiation to get the THC levels up or down? Yeah. No, I, no, no, I, no. They use, it, they, up, they use it to get it down. But down. I, I'm thinking that I, from what I've read, I mean, it's all technical stuff and it's hard to read. You know, universities and stuff like that like to use big words. But from what I've read is they, they, they use some sort of combination of UV probably that that reduces the THC level down to uh, to 15%. That, that's what they tell everybody. We don't know what they do. 
You know, they're regulated, but we don't get to know what they do. You know, not only radiation, not only is it all of those costs, but then we also have to look at not only those costs, but then what we could have taken that money and done it with. So here we're spending billions of dollars fighting something that we could regulate pretty simply like alcohol. And I think we all know that smoking cannabis, well, I think we're pretty sure, like 99% sure, that smoking cannabis and playing records that rap backwards doesn't make you want to kill anybody. It doesn't make you hear the devil. I think we're pretty sure. I think maybe there's a few people left, but I think yeah. we understand that cannabis isn't, you know what I mean? Like cannabis just isn't what they told us it was, you know, 50 years ago in the public service announcements where you would, you know, kill and rape. I, I don't think, I think we're beyond that. <clears throat> yeah. So I look uh, at all the money. I just we, think, Go on. That, that's the thing. I, I think it's just silly to spend so much money on, on trying to get medical cannabis out there that doesn't have. You could just use CBD. If you don't want the, the effects of the high in the stone, you could just use CBD. Same, similar effects, but no, no stone, no high. <clears throat> Listen, I just, I, I always bring up this point. In 1970s, we had Atari. It was video games made out of squares. Now there's video games where you can shoot cops and pinch pimp bitches. There is no going back. There's no going back anymore. It's just not, it, that's not how we work. The only way we go back is when the lights go off and we lose 80% of the population because we didn't prepare for a catastrophic event, minimally. You know what I mean? Like, <clears throat> that's the only way we go back. There is no going back. We either continue forward and get the fuck off the planet because... Because CO2 values have never led temperature increases before. It's always been temperature increases, then CO2. But we're on a cycle. It's undeniable. The cycling is undeniable. And when you look at... Okay, so we talk about any one component. And I always tell you guys that you should look at the world from many components. One of the components is, how do you allocate resources? We allocate a significant amount of resources to fighting whether it's fighting drugs or fighting other countries or fighting whatever it is. I don't understand the resources that we're allocating toward what happens in the future. And I would just like to point out that the more resources we allocate to the past and the more resources we allocate to fighting battles, the greater the drag on our culture and it slows us and our people and humanity and it slows us down and we can't move forward. And you know what I mean? Like, there's just so many drags on people. I just don't understand where it goes. I, I don't understand why the energy is just being spent there. Where's a leader that says this is where we should be headed, not bogging us down with nonsense like you're saying? Man, so yeah. tell me, what what you said you're in, you said you were in the Netherlands, and I pulled up a map over here of where the Netherlands are. So let's take a look at your life. What What's the city somewhere in the Netherlands, Netherlands that I could look up so we could see a video of your hometown? Uh, or, if you look at Utrecht, that's where I live most of my life. I don't live there anymore, but I live close by to Utrecht now. Um, can you spell that word for me? Sure. U-T-R-E-C-H-T. I was close. Yeah. Okay. So a day in Utrecht, Netherlands. Okay, so I live in Vegas. It's the butthole of the planet, and you have restaurants next to water. Yeah. Ah. That's true. Oh, some, look at this. And artwork. Yeah. Oh, your buildings are spectacular with angles. I love the little cobblestone streets. Oh, the bubble guy. Oh, yeah, the red shutters. Who doesn't love that? Ah, dude. So what, like your weekends are what, like Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday? How long are your weekends? <laughs> uh, I, I wish. No, just a Saturday and a Sunday. Uh, I have to go back to work on Monday, work till Friday. So they're, they're, the weeks are just as long over here as, the, as they are over there. Um, are your people, like here in the Netherlands, you guys are, I mean, look at them. This, this part looks, do you have like a port? Like, do you have something? What's the big thing in the Netherlands? Are you guys, is it all a small town? Is it big town? Where are you guys going? 
No, it's it's not all small towns. I mean, the the city of Utrecht alone has, I believe, three hundred and eighty thousand people living in it. So it's a, it's a pretty big city. Yeah, pretty big city. I mean, there, there's only seventeen million people in the whole of Netherlands, so it's not that big of a country. All right, listen, Barry. I appreciate yes. the phone call. Is there anything you'd like to say? Anything I could do for you before I end the call and get back to the show? No, we, we, we should get back to the show and let people call in with their, uh, their cannabis problems, uh, grow problems. <laughs> <clears throat> My friend, I appreciate the call in ways that I can't express to you from the other side of the planet. You know what I mean? Calling the show, taking the time to express your opinion, sharing your country with us. I totally appreciate it. And you're right. I'm from the United States and you were right. The Netherlands and Finland were not close enough for me to make that comparison. I apologize. I thought I had somebody from Finland calling and well, frankly, I don't know my geography. Ah, there you go. I love admitting stuff. I don't know. I'm the grow boss. The number is 84 grow boss. You know, that was somebody from Netherlands telling us about how it is to grow and sell cannabis in the Netherlands. And of course, I always get a little sidetracked with the uh, with the insanity of the government that we have. And, and I like the government. Listen, I feel pretty safe. You know what I mean? Like, I feel pretty safe. I don't have some of the problems some other people have in the United States. And I do think we should always pay attention to everybody's problems and bring us all forward. Like, literally, if you want to serve in the military... I will make a special bathroom just for you. Transgender, male, female, LGBTB, straight, whatever. Man, listen, if you're going to serve our country, if I could go back, I would do that. I would make a bathroom for everybody. There would be so many fucking bathrooms. You'd be like, where do we put the guns? Because I take them off the ships. Right. I just stopped doing battle with everybody. Okay. Um, listen. Um, Daniel, I'll, I'll tell you, I have this little theory called 3%. I know they talk about the one percenters, but I have this theory because I'm a paramedic nurse, right? I ran around for years, picking people up off the street and bringing them to the hospitals. And here's something that I learned every day of the week, every hospital is overstaffed. I mean, overstocked with people going there for nonsense. I believe that if 1% of the population were to get sick, that it would trigger, unless it stopped right there, there comes that point between 1% and 3%, where at 3%, we would no longer have the people going to the power stations. We would no longer have enough people for water. We would no longer have enough people to maintain any of the city infrastructure. Things would go so quick. I just think it's absolutely crazy. All right. I don't think that we address that properly. And I think our resources on the daily are already overwhelmed. And if you're not ready for a problem, listen, Alex Jones is Alex Jones. And he may be a little bit far on the far side, but listen, the government's made, the government and the, 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 the police force are made up of people just like us who go through problems just like us, who have divorces and marriages and mental problems just like everybody else. They're us. If we don't take care of them like they're us and we don't take care of us like they're them and the whole thing doesn't come together pretty soon, then Yellowstone's going to explode and North Korea is going to take over. <laughs> I don't know about all that, but call me. It's 84 Grow Boss. Ah... Uh, Anyway, so I think it's super funny. And what we were actually talking about was, boom, we we're talking about drying and curing and the relationship and the timeline. And I'm going to save this because I think, um, I think this is appropriate for us because um, we have had this discussion several times. So let's talk drying and curing and curing. As part of this is also the conversion of CBDs into um, conversion of CBDs into other things. Can I say that? Can I say other things? No, that's not very technical. Conversion of CBDs and conversion of CBD and THC, and we'll just leave it at that. So this curing process right here. And what we always talk about in the curing process right here. Uh-oh. 
Oh, the response? Okay, so listen, Chuck Norris, the reality is there's three people inside of each and every one of us. There's a parent, an adult, and a child. And unless you're the right person at the right time, it's tough to have a relationship with another. And if you can't be the adult and you have to parent someone in your relationship, then the parent-child relationship can't work out. Why do you think the lone wolf divorced me Right? I mean, because when we were kids, because I was a child, she had to be a parent. She had three kids. Totally my fault in terms of like all that. I mean, like, fuck, I didn't grow up till like a couple of weeks ago. So I totally see the. <clears throat> <clears throat> um, yeah. Conversion of CBDs into plastic, dude. Super funny. Um, okay. So that's what I'm saying is like the curing part let's sort of put a timeline on like a timeline on this now so we had one person that said 12 days we had we had you know we have like these different times and so let's just say that the drying 10 days total whether this be uh whether this be on on or off branch Listen, you know why I'm doing this? Because eventually you're going to see this in a book that I sell called Curing, right? Like, <laughs> I haven't listened to him in a while, but I did do the silver. I like the radiation thing. Uh, the iodine <laughs> drops. I even have the uh, orange drink powder. Oh, my friend who owned one of the other hydro stores turned me on to him. He's super, you know, my other buddy, listen, my other buddy call. I, I literally, I, we were talking on the phone and I was like, oh shit, the Boston marathon just got bombed. And he was like, boom, half a second later, he says, oh, our government is killing people again. Listen, I'm not into that even a little bit, but I mean, that's how fast people like that think that was his example, not mine. You know what I mean? All right. Alex Jones is entry level. I, I don't even listen. I don't even, I don't even want to know what's beyond that. I just stopped listening because I remember on one of his shows, he was like, the other shows are really starting to get on me because I'm kind of scattered and I'm all over the place. And I got to tell you, since I've started this show, I haven't had my commercials timed. I've just been winging it. You know what I mean? Like I don't have my ins and outs. So I, I totally, I totally sympathize with him for that. You know, in terms of the quality of the show and moving stuff forward, dude, Howard Stern, not only is he knock it out of the park, he's been knocking it out of the park for 40 years. You know what I mean? Like that guy is the world is flat and giants exist. So, you know, Howard Stern's been knocking it out of the park for 40 years. So, and he's done a damn good job the whole time. He's got a crew and a team and he put it together over it. You know, I'm just saying it's pretty good. I mean, he's chewed through a couple of comedians and all, but he's kept the core together. And, you know, he's always been a leader in that thing. And I just always thought he did such a good job. Um, you, know, it, you know, the things he does is questionable sometimes, but, you know, in terms of, in terms of a guy who walks the line, I think in the history, nobody has walked the line with more respect than that guy. I mean, he's just never been called out for any scams. Even in his divorce, in his new marriage, he's been doing great. 330, get me back on THC. What can I do for you? Hello, boss. What's happening? Hey, good afternoon at this point. Get me back on topic. What can I do hey. for you? All right. Um, so I know I messed up pretty bad with letting my plant get too close to the light. <laughs> I'll tell you the call is much easier when you lead off with the solution. I don't got to do nothing. So where does the call go from here? Uh, so I'm a new grower. Uh, this is my first grow and I've let my plant get out of control and too close to the light. And I have... Uh, air cooled hood that I don't have the glass on. Okay. How much light? What's the wattage in the hood? Yeah. Uh, it's a thousand watt. Okay. So you got a thousand watt in a hood, no glass. Okay. Right. Uh, it's in the basement and my fan is pulling cool air into the tent. So it was actually cooling it too much. So it's not, I don't have it hooked up. Uh, through the hood to cool that as well. 
but I'm in week four of flower, and we are now 18 inches away from the light. So my question, I guess, is should I throw the glass back on and run the ducting through the light and lower the temperatures overall in the tent? That doesn't or lower the temperature. Listen, it. listen, if putting glass on the hood and venting the hood lowered the temperature, I, I would be wrong all these years because, again, unless you're bringing cold air in, you'd have to – are you trying to warm it up? Or I did. That was the original, yeah, with the no glass and not running the uh, – I also, of course, I, <laughs> I went overboard and bought an 8-inch inline van. So it was right. just sucking way too much. Right. So let me ask. Let, let me ask you this then. Um, in terms of in terms of in terms of this, uh, what is the light hanging from? Uh, the top of the tent. How tall is the tent? On seven foot. And and what is so? Give me the, what size is the tent? It's a five by five. Okay. So you've got a five by five. How is the hood hanging from the top? It is. Okay, so it's just like literally hooked up to the top and your buds, I, I just want to, I, you know what I mean? Like I just want to go back and I just want to point out, um, I just want to point out that that here's a guy, I mean, I just, I just want to put this video up. So what you're telling me, is that you have a seven foot tent and your plants got 18 inches from the light your buds yeah okay yeah so the question is not well besides why is your light at a thousand you should have dimmed it the question is really why didn't you trellis them down like here i'm posting up the same old navy video that i always post up garden rescue old navy let me see if I can get this. This is the video <clears throat> that I always post up um, for what buds look like when they get too close to the light. But my question is, when you look, when you look lower down on the plant, you can see that he just let his legs. Here it comes. Here it comes. Here it comes. Boom! Look at this. Why didn't he trellis them down? Because I showed you that trellis video that I did. Um, I showed yeah, you the. I have a trellis, and it's still got that tall. Listen, if it's still got that tall, the questions that I should be asking you are: Why did you veg them so long? Like, how about this? Yeah, I think I, that's where I messed up. Yeah. So for you, solving the problem would be consider the plant count versus veg time. So in your particular case, how long did you veg them for? I veg. For six weeks under 400 before I switched them over, and then I vegged, I cranked it up, I was dropped it to 600, veg for two weeks, 750, veg for two weeks, and then flipped it to flower at 750. Okay, so you'll either have to veg two weeks less, you'll have to okay. top sooner. You'll have to trellis more aggressively, but you know, like I, I, you know, in all cases, I say this with okay. So let me, I'm going to switch to more pictures. I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to what I usually show you, show you guys with is, this is the guy. Um, blam. So this is day one. He starts flowering and he says, "What should I do?" I said, "Dude." You should fill up the uh, space in the middle. So the next picture that I'll show you is he said, okay. So what he does is he literally adds three plants right down the middle. See how full that canopy is? See how low it is? He's in a tent. When you look at the, when you look, and the reason that I always bring this up is he gave me this to show you. This sideways cut view. You know what I mean? Like check this out. Now this is the one with six plants in it, not nine. So you don't uh, you don't have to. So that's why the trellis isn't as thick. 
but I just want to point out that that this is sort of when you're growing indoors, you sort of have to get it like this. This is what this is this is what you're aiming for. Except imagine three more plants in there. Okay. Just okay. that I just want you to understand because that way you can end up with buds in every hole. I mean, you got to get a bud in pretty much every square if you want to get the yield. Okay. See what I'm saying? Like there's this relationship between between the canopy and if you if you have half the canopy by definition you have you get half the yield and don't forget you get twice the light you can't just think about if you got half the yield you also got twice the light i mean that's four times the punishment because you got it wrong it's it, it's that's why everything has to go smooth and everything has to go just right and everything has to go just the way it has to go for it to go the way it has to go and and yeah. literally okay so one of the guys okay so one of who was it you know what i wanted to there's a couple of people all right did i did that answer your question like do you see my point? Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, yeah, I definitely see where I messed up. I messed up vegging way too long, and letting them get way too close. Well, that was cause and effect. That was cause and effect, right? What I mean, it, it could have been just as easily. It's not that you vegged them too long; it's that you didn't shape them properly. I mean, when there's a problem, you must insert grower. <laughs> it's never yeah. the plant so oh the problem is they got too close to the light boom insert grower what could grower have done grower could have topped early and more often possibly removed a plant been more aggressive with trellising see what i mean those are all grower skills in between the cause and the effect right yeah for sure yeah listen you didn't call me up with too many nutrients. You already knew the problem. That go Listen, thanks for the call. And that's why I say a lot of what I do is finesse. Okay, it's 1050. The store is supposed to open up in a minute. And I didn't even get to the thing where there's... Okay, so Patrick said, Patrick asks, I heard you say something about a 15 on and 15 off schedule with Turbo Clone. Um, one of the things that we were talking about in um uh the bushmaster turbo clone one of the things that we were talking about with the bushmaster and turbo clone hang on a second let me get the video up let me uh bah, that's not right let me post see why it does okay Okay, maybe if I do it with the mouse, copy. No. Okay, so anyway. So Bushmaster, this is, we're talking about the Bushmaster, um, Turbo Clone and the Bushmaster. Clearly I spelled something wrong there. Okay, so we talk about the very end that these things show up like roots like that. And then I showed you that uh, <clears throat> one of the callers, one of the listeners had a, uh, had sent in a picture oh dude you know he sent in his picture with uh nope that didn't do it let's see nope okay so hang on control w 30 okay so here's his picture of a turbo cloner with the roots that turned out pretty good right so um, okay, so image, okay, so this just is his, so these were the turbo clone results, and his question was, the 15 on, 15 off is specifically because the roots don't need water all the time, and here's why, when you have a, when you start off with root riots, this is the root riot, when you start off with root riots, the stalk of the clone cannot die, the cutting, clone have roots, the stalk of the cutting cannot um, dynamically absorb water from the, the marshmallows, right? So you, if you can't absorb water from the marshmallows, you have to add a Mondi humidity dome. That's why they cut the leaves, right? So you cut the leaves, 
you add them on to humidity dome, which increases the humidity. You, bah, where is my, you have to add the Mondi hygrometer to this. You screw it on and then you know the temp and humidity inside the dome. And all you need to do is just raise the humidity a little bit. Doesn't need to be rainstorm conditions inside the dome to get that humidity that you're looking for. The reason you want humidity for the clones is such that the clones don't transpire. Remember, just like a paper towel, it wicks water up from the bottom. And if you suck water out of the top, it'll just keep pulling more water up from the bottom. That's why if you do a wicking system in a bucket of media, your plants are going to get too wet. That's just another silly thing on the list that you guys come up with to do. So, Mondi Humidity Dome, Root Riot Starter Plugs, uh, Clonex Solution, a two-foot, one-bulb light, and the optional heating pad uh, if you want. Uh, and then I'm just going to put that on my kit. I'll make a quick video that shows you guys how to clone, and I'll put the kit together on how to do that. But, you know, that's... That's why in a hydro cloner, you can turn the water off for 15 minutes because they can dynamically absorb water from their tip as it builds up from the hydro cloner, from a turbo cloner. So here, when you watch the turbo clone um, in, in operation, it literally just, right? It just, uh, I have, we got a little bit of the video here. Let's see. like the turbo cloner just uh pump uh, so like the right so the turbo cloner just kind of pumps water out of those right so the sprays up super oxygenated environment but not super oxygenated water listen you don't really care about the amount of oxygen in the water because oh that's what it was i'm going to stop right now because i owe an apology to um, I owe an apology to, um, okay, let's put this up here. I owe an apology to, um, active my questions. I owe an apology to, oh, I saved this. Um, uh, you guys all, you guys all want to see this anyway. Um, So I put something up. So I had some people from the show send me some emails about pulling peat moss. I wanted to go over that. Uh, books, color. Uh, okay, so where is... Apology. Give me one sec because I, I wanted to actually make this right. Ah, oh, here we go. Oh, yeah, I just love this. Boom. Pull it over here. And... Okay, you know, I was making fun of this product a couple of weeks ago because of, of what it did. And I would like to correct myself because I was misinformed. Um, I was, I was, let me accept responsibility, sorry. I was not as educated as I should have been before commenting on the topic because clearly I was 100% wrong. Let me tell you what this does. Let me post it up right here so you guys can all see it too. Boom. The O2 generator. Okay. So this thing makes... Dude, this thing is electrolysis. It doesn't push air through a tube. It's this controller thing that's electrolysis and separates the oxygen and hydrogen. So... It isn't actually bubbling air. Listen, I got no idea if this thing makes more heat. I have no idea if this process helps your plants. I do know that we see lots of videos with the airstone on the left um, in terms of uh, in terms of my store. Uh, you can't see it, but there are. But I sell lots of airstones. You know what I mean? All the round ones, the blue ones, the small ones, the big air stones. I sell lots of pumps in my store. All I'm saying is that it seems to me like there's a lot of success with this. So what does this get you? I have no idea. Let's, uh, 
Let's click the check price button and see what this nuclear bomb, <laughs> this is the product. And I'll tell you how I know, because Bolivia guy who came to my store and bought my lunch was like, so how do I use these? And then he educated me on what they were. And I was like, dude, what the fuck is this? So we went through a whole system. I mean, I told him you can use this or not. I have no idea. Listen, if you're experimenting, I have no idea. Don't ask me any questions. It's your experiment. If you'd like me to answer questions, you'll have to provide me with a theory, an end goal. You know what I mean? A hypothesis. You're going to have to provide me some information. Okay. So I wanted to apologize to these guys. I really have no idea what your product is. So I just wanted to say, sorry about that. I spoke. I was incorrect. I have no idea if your product's better or worse, or if it's even worse, worth the money. Perhaps you could grow cannabis three times in a row and show us how much better it is before we get a bunch of your peop our people buying your product. Um, okay. Um, uh, BCC, another one. Wait, wait, wait. No offense to Grow Boss. Grow Boss is great, also. Wait, who's the best? Bah! Um. Oh, oh, the Plant Nutrition Rundown by Harley Smith. Um. Yeah. Listen, that guy knows his shit. I, I don't have anything to say. You know what I mean? That guy knows his shit. All I'm saying is, if there, imagine how many Harleys we would have to have. For somebody ex to explain to you how light, just light, just light, just light. And then we would have to have somebody to just curing and somebody for just trellising. And we would have to have somebody for every line of nutrient. Eh, okay. But we definitely have to have somebody who was willing to explain how to, how to grow and grow down and how to use a cloth pot. Somebody for, I mean, how many... You know what I mean? Think about finding somebody who, and I like Harley. I like him. I've met him, hung out with him. He's as whack as any of us. So I like Harley. So in terms of that, I'm just suggesting that it's one of many things. And the amount and depth of information that he has while spectacular is meaningless in terms of growing. Why? Because one bottle of Fox Farm Grow and one bottle of Fox Farm Bloom is enough to get you there. Any grow, any bloom. They're just the ones in my store. You don't need a three part. You don't need a seven part. You don't need 22 bottles like advanced nutrients. They're all minerals. They all come from the same place. It's all the same shit. And if you have less light, you're going to use less nutrients. That's why I'm saying like, it's just, just a, it's, it's, it's such a small factor in the entire scheme of things. That's what my book's about. My book is about defining all of those individual tiny factors so you can make better decisions. Listen, I, I really, before somebody shows up at my store and they're going to show up in a sec, I really wanted to go over the one more thing again with you guys. And I really wanted to go over, um, uh, um, cannabis information network. And I really wanted to go over like, listen, this is what I've already sort of started it. <clears throat> cannabis information network i put up a couple videos they're probably not going to be interesting to you they're more on the business side but i do send out emails with these videos to stores <clears throat> i have started posting more relevant information about this and so i you know here's a place and a space for you guys to start posting that i can start posting some relevant information and listen if you create a show on my channel and it works, I'm going to send your show to my advertisers. I'm going to put advertising on your channel. And you are going to be like, hey, grow boss, I want a piece of that. And I'm going to be like, hey, dude, uh, you deserve a piece of that. Not that much. But you do deserve a piece. Not that much. A little less. 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 Right. That. No. A little less. There you go. That's how much of that you deserve. So. And, and you know what I mean? And you'll know what's on there because you'll be able to watch your channel. Why? Because I've gotten, I've gotten smart enough at this that we, you know what I mean? We don't monetize the video. I just put the commercial in your video. If we want to change it, you know what I mean? We can spot out the commercial. We can, we can also run our own live commercials, limit who we put in there <clears throat> through Google AdWords. So if you create, <coughs> 
So if you can create content the way I create content and put it up here, I have a distribution network for your content. A little less. <laughs> and <clears throat> all I'm suggesting is that we have the opportunity here to start putting this stuff together. <clears throat> bah! Hey, listen, if I'm going to have to cough, I might as well smoke the cannabis. Smoke the cannabis. All I'm suggesting is we have a way to put a highbrow. We have the ability to put a highbrow touch on what has typically been. It would have typically been a lowbrow market. And. Oh, dude, you want my dog? Listen, you don't want my dog in a Ralphie giveaway because he just uh, he just. uh <laughs> you just cry and pace your whole house and yeah, you wouldn't want that. So yeah, that's what I'm suggesting is that, is that if you guys have some content now, I know a lot of you have posted some stuff up on the channel, have sent me some emails and I haven't been as dutiful as I could about getting back to you, but I do like the ideas and I have sort of been finishing the store and working on a couple of things and putting together a few more things for videos and stuff. But you see my dude, you see my Nope, that's that cam. That, my QVC station, I'll have to get. Um, okay, so all of these are USB cam cams, and clearly that's not HD enough for the USB, for the product labels. Um, I may have to lower my cam, and maybe if I put it on straight, it'll be more clear. Otherwise, I'm just going to have to add a uh, HD capture card to the top secret computer control center back here Dun -dun -dun, for the system. Um, and then I'll just make the one camera HD because the grow boss doesn't need to be in HD, although I could be a little better lit. But that's, um, so, oh, shrooms. I hate doing shrooms. Oh my God. If you get good at it, but then people that do shrooms, dude, you do shrooms for a while and you change. I knew a guy, Shroom Dave, Mushroom Dave, who was like a cook and did shrooms and he's a weird dude. Okay, so you guys got to like the channel. You guys got to subscribe. I'm going to start doing stuff during the week because I've got a few more things. We've talked about doing a little bit on the subscription side um, for Grow Boss. Um, Grow Boss runs educational. Like we read the book. I comment on the book. We run the videos like, the, like this video, like the weekend webcast. We run those for free on one side of the subscription. And then we put the educational stuff on the other side of the subscription. Um, we can run... Oh, yeah, dude. I remember doing acid and driving back from Frisco and pulling over because we were so high on acid. It was like looking through a kaleidoscope. Oh, dude. Um, LED lighting. Meh. You know, all buds the same. If you can get a good deal on LEDs, I think that's fantastic. I think if you spend a lot of money on LEDs, I think it's a bad idea. And... If you're looking for LEDs and you're local in Vegas, I've got some LED deals for you. I have bought so many used LEDs recently, you'd almost think that there was something going on I don't know about. You know what I mean? Got to change that bong water. <coughs> um, I wonder I wonder what you're disagreeing me. Oh, I'm just saying like, oh, um, in it, I'm just suggesting that Intin, Para, I'm just suggesting that his information is fantastic. I'm just saying there's a lot of people that come to my store who are like, oh, dude, I'm so in love with cannabis. I'm going to take botany and I'm going to learn all about. And then they realize that botany is four years and has absolutely nothing to do with cannabis. All I'm suggesting is you don't need to know what's in the nutrients. You don't need to know what spectrum your light is. Those are never the decisions. People don't come in here with a spectrum of light problem. They come in here because they put too much light in too small a space. Their shit got too hot. It smells like brown or hay. You don't understand the difference between a hydro cloning system like turbo cloner, where the clone can dynamically absorb water from the root and a dome like this with an increase in humidity. I'm just suggesting that most people don't understand what the real problems are. They all want to grow the best cannabis. They just want to buy the best equipment, but that doesn't have anything to do with using it. I'm just suggesting that there's a difference between a 400 watt T5 and a 400 watt HID that's in a hood. And you're saying the smaller it goes, the brighter it gets by definition. If you have half the plants, it's twice the light. 
I'm just saying there are different relationships between all of these things. So, yes, uh, P Jammer, I have got T5 deals. I've just bought a couple of four foot eight bulb T5s that are super clean and work nice. They're one, if you come in, you can have them for 125. I've got that one right back there that I think works that's dirty that I got for 10 bucks. Oh, dead. You can have that one uh, over there by that fan filter combo. Uh, let's go take a look. We'll do one more. We'll do one more wander cam on the store. Oh, yeah. And for the record, I don't like the hat. I do like, I think I'll just put it in a stick. Okay, I'll put the rest of the bulbs in here. If you come and clean this up so Chuck doesn't have to, dude, you can have it for 80 bucks with the bulbs. And then there's this. You want a deal on that giant fan? You can have that fan for 75 bucks. You can have it with that filter. What, 140 bucks? Um, brand new filter. Um, I think the fan is actually pretty new because if you look at it, the dirt is just right on top because the guy said they put it on out. They, they left it outside because he had a whole fish to cock a story about how he had to go pick it up from his ex-girlfriend's house and how he just got back into town. But I got to tell you, I love the story because you know, me and the customer that were here, we like literally just like, right? So he shows up at the door. We literally walk outside and uh, he's got a van, like a Dodge van, like, like, uh, could you help me put this couch in my van, please? I have a broken arm. You know what I mean? In, in Silence of the Lambs. So he opens up the doors and I look at the customer and I'm like, this is why I like being a paramedic because you know, have no idea what the fuck is going to about to come out of. Oh, I sold those two tents that were right here yesterday too. I sold them for one tent for the pair, two, three by three by five talls. That's the three by five. I have left tent. Um, that's a stick and pad for when you walk into your garden so you don't get bugs. Um, and so there's a three by five tent hiding under there, but yeah, Oh, you need some sunblocker? Oh, anyway, so I've got T5, 75 bucks. I'll give you all, 70 bucks, I think I said. Oh, shit. Like, he's raising his prices right now. All right. They got that fan filter. Um, do I have anything on this side that's used today? Oh, boom. That kind LED. It's a uh, K5 1000 with remote. I've got a couple of these k5 k5 750s with remotes um i got a bunch of used ballasts ah oh, dude these are thousand watt dimmables oh those are my mars stack because i did a little episode for the stores and the vendors about all the things that i buy online although i have an account with mars now but i got a bunch of used thousand watt ballasts i think they're still in box i don't even know if they're used i just know uh I just know I can't sell them as new. There's a couple more kinds up there. I really like the way this is coming. Like I like, I got a lot of good product. It's all face up. Those shelves are 13 inches deep. These shelves are 25 inches deep, but then, you know, you got to stock a lot more nutrients, like 12 bottles of shit. Cause you want to buy it by the case for the deal. You know, here's the, like my Tiki counter, because when I was looking at the other hydro stories, dude, they all have counters. We got a bunch too much product at the moment still because I'm still right size in the store. I'm going to do something with that area up there. Like we're going to make like a little face plate or something. Put some fans up there. Got some sweet little Ikea shelves for the back of the counter. Ah, dude, it's just always my favorite. There is nothing better for a 1,200 square foot store than the Rockwool Smart Pot plastic bag stack oh because there's two different kinds of four by fours and apparently some three by threes in there and there's a couple different kinds of three by threes in there yeah oh yeah just love that um so anyway so you guys have a lot of good ideas um i like harley's education again i'm just saying um <laughs> you just don't need to know it it's just listen don't uh don't worry about growing your dope just leave it alone and let it grow and you will win 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 that's all i was saying about that i love the guy and he is super smart he is way smarter than me about that but uh, i'm just i'm just suggesting that there are a lot of variables but in terms of nutrients literally a bottle of any grow and calmag is 
everything you need to get there or or decrease your light you know what i mean raise your light or decrease it because if you are growing a plant faster than a than grow with some cow mag you have too much light it's going too fast it's not you're just you're going to run into a problem in a minute you just can't you can only let the plant do what the plant does and for what the plant requires at the speed the plant requires it everything in a one part bottle of grow um that's all i'm saying um yes and you know what I mean? There's a relationship again between the pot size and and how often you water and how many nutrients. Because if you put a one gallon plant in a five gallon bucket, there's four gallons of media. If you water with 200 ppm, one gallon of media has roots. The other four gallon doesn't. That's what I'm always saying. It's a really hard thing to do. All you have to do really in terms of nutrients is not use too much of any one part. That's why I think Advanced Nutrients is smarter than me. I mean, they've got stacks and stacks of products. So that's, uh, that's my observation about that. Oh, shit. Volvo. Listen, I, you don't really see Volvos that last more than three years, but I will take those compliments. Best day of audio so far. Yeah, totally. I think I got the audio, didn't lose the mic once, got the camera set up, small little bit of fine tuning. I think I'm pretty close to being able to do a much bigger show. Once that's done, and now that the store is done, I have just a couple of things that I have to do. For instance, I ran a commercial. I wonder if I can... Okay, I wonder if I can pull up this commercial and show you. Fuck, nobody's there yet, so it works for me. Um, let me sign in. Let me show you. I have this uh, Clonex commercial that I just ran. Oh, it's not Clonex. Not Clonex. Not Clonex. It is. It is actually. Uh, it is actually superior. Um, let me find the commercial. Okay, so let me, <laughs> you're going to want to see this because I, I think this is, I think this is me. Let me, I have two versions of this. Okay, so this is one. If you, okay, you wait there and then, okay, so there's, so I run these national commercials and this is really, really what separates me from everybody else when we talk about why I'm saying you could come on, do something with me on the cannabis network, because here's why. If you found this video, you've been watching videos about growing indoors, right? Hi, I'm the Grow Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. And when you're ready to start growing, or if your plants aren't growing like they should, or if you're not, getting the weight you want call my friends over at superior grower supply they've got a location in <laughs> lansing south lansing and Livona. oh and don't forget to mention this video when you go there to get your free copy of the grow book and equipment guide that's a 20 dollars value for free and remember the top three garden plants are too much light, too much water, and too many nutrients. So try not to overdo it. Know what I mean? They've got a location in Lansing, oh. South Lansing, and Livona. Okay, so the length of the video is determined by YouTube and how they charge me for the video. That's the length of the video. Now, what I did was, this is the commercial that I run. This video, you're looking to learn to grow weed. In my I'm local Grow area. Boss. I write the Grow Book and Equipment Guide. And I own Henderson Hydroponics here in Las Vegas. So, if you're looking to get started growing weed, come to my store. I'll teach you everything you need to know to grow. We've got new, used, everything you need to get started growing weed. And, if you mention this video, I'll even give you a copy of my Grow Book. 
Okay, so I was a little more aggressive with my video than with their video, but you see how I chopped it up and I put their information, these and other fine retailers. This product is available at these and other fine retailers. That's that's what I'm... Uh, um, okay, so... <laughs> So the next round of those commercials, we're going to start throwing some light bulbs and hoods and ballast off the roof. And we're going to start smashing some shit. And I'm going to do my crazy Eddie. Price is so low. They're insane. Dude. Dude. So I just want to point out that. Oh, dude. I grew up. This guy's my hero. It's a crazy Eddie Christmas in August. Audio blowout blitz. Crazy Eddie's going to save you a blizzard of bucks on stereo rack systems, compact disc players, portable stereos, speakers, turntables, receivers, anything and everything in audios on sale now. Remember, we are not undersold. We will not be undersold. Uh, we cannot be undersold. And we can this guy be my hero? Is Eddie that right? No, I can't Audio blowout blitz. Get anything and everything in audio on sale now. Crazy Eddie, his prices are... Take that insane! Ah, oh, dude. And you've they... seen the movie, you've read the book, you've got the t-shirt, now experience it for yourself! Crazy Eddie's Christmas and all this <sighs> TV and video blowout blitz! Crazy Eddie's gonna save you a blizzard of bucks! Okay, TV's somewhere VCR, in this crazy Eddie smashes some video. shit, Remember, or it's crazy... Undersold. What was it? It's crazy Gideon? Ah, oh, dude. <laughs> this is what I grew up with. <laughs> yeah so it's probably this is what i grew up on oh chevy chase oh dude that's why I like it it always makes me sad when i like when i hear the uh sham wow reference and uh because i'm like i'm like oh dude this guy the the this guy oh dude the carbell ice cream uh, some old Carvel commercials. Oh, dude, this guy. It's Carvel, the Budgie the Whale Cake. Handmade fresh ice cream. Made fresh in each store. Uh, Your Carvel dealer can show you how it's made. Oh, dude. Like, the best one's always. Ice cream to celebrate your passage into middle aged What more could you want? Oh, Fudgy the Whale Cake. <laughs> Come on, how about the new set of golf clubs I got you? Uh, is that required equipment for middle? Ah, oh, you just. Happy birthday, honey. It's the big 4-0. Oh. Oh. Make a wish. I wish I was 29. <laughs> but I think this Carvel ice cream cake will definitely cheer me up. Oh. God, I just love, you know what I mean. Anyway, so. Fudgy the whale cake. Tuesday, buy one, get one free flying saucers. Oh, I just love the Carvel guy. So. All I'm saying is when we look at the commercials that when we look at this superior grower supply commercial, what I actually do is I actually spend five dollars a day and I run this only in land only in all of Michigan. So if you look at like uh, if you look at like, let me see if this is uh, it, it, if I can audiences like. When I set these up, oh, I can't show it to you on there without showing you the account. So, okay. So what I'm just suggesting is I run this commercial <clears throat> for them, just for them in all of Michigan. They've got three locations and there's 15,834,000 people, 400 something in Michigan, according to Google AdWords. Who the fuck better to know that what's in Michigan? So. I spend a couple hundred bucks a month, I think like 150 on this commercial is my budget for them. And if this commercial drives people to their store to ask for their books, they buy more books from me. Eventually, I'll charge them for the commercials. This is my test market after I did my own market. So I run these commercials in their market. I run my commercial in my market because AdWords is that good. So what I'm going to start doing with my, uh, with my consulting thing, with that $49 an hour consulting thing I do is... Um, my observation is like, I'll make a $49. Hey, I'm the grow boss. If you know, it's co legal in your, if your area, if you're looking to consult, if you want some information before you hire someone, Hey, I'm the grow boss. It's $79 an hour. If you've got more than 10 lights, $49 an hour. If you got less than 10 lights, you know what I mean? I'll save you more money than you could imagine in an hour. Right. And then I can run just those commercials 
in just the uh, Michigan is the new capital of weed on the East Coast, Oregon and NorCal on the West Coast. All I'm saying is that there are not only different markets between outdoors and indoors. I'm just saying that we can start to attack them as they were different markets as we identify them. Anyway, <clears throat> what separates me from all the other channels is I'm paid to produce the content. When I pay to advertise the content, and in some cases I'm paid to advertise monthly, they pay me to run commercials. I run, uh, I run, hang on a sec. <clears throat> I run a Mondi commercial. Woo, that was a minute ago, wasn't it? I run a Mondi commercial where I just like seriously just had a little bit of fun. I ended up uh, doing a little Ben Hill. Ah. Just heat up the tip a little bit. Yeah, so we end up uh, putting the anyway, so we end up doing this. Um, I have I have uh, a couple of more videos that like commercials like uh, okay, so I'll show you one. So okay, check this one out. You don't really yeah, think about boss. I'm out here in my garden and I just wanted to remind you the most important thing about cloning, right? And that is you have to start with a healthy plant because if you've overwatered your plants, overfed, or put the light too close, they're never going to root. But you could take a branch from a plant like this and it'll pretty much root into your hand. Why? Because it's coming from a healthy plant. Clonex though, well that just accelerates the process, right? And that's why whenever you take cuttings, you should always. I mean, clearly you shouldn't just dip you know, put the branch in the bottle, but I got a lot of bottles. And you can find more information about Clonex <coughs> and your closest hydro store at everyhydrostore.com. Okay, so you click on that and it, no, you click on that. Bah! Anyway, so I have Clonex commercials. I have, um, here's a Thermoflow commercial that I did with 35,000 views. I mean, here's one of the, that Turbo, I mean, that Clonex commercial has 75,000 views. That's not even, that's not even on the Grow Boss channel because they banished the Grow Boss channel because I tried to advertise marijuana on it. Now, I did run the first national marijuana commercial, but I just want you to understand that those 72,000 views were paid for. I was paid to make that commercial and run them. <clears throat> and I don't mind spending the money. Why? Because that commercial has 72,000 views and it drives people. You can click on it and buy my book. We would do the same thing for you and those videos that you make and the Cannabis Information Network. All I'm suggesting is, yeah, Clonex works awesome. So I'm just suggesting that when we, when we run it like this, I have the ability to put together, in terms of my platform, I have the ability to put you in front of advertisers in a way, oh, dude. Oh my God, I'm a grandpa all of a sudden. Oh, I don't wanna be my grandpa. He's so good. Uh, God damn. That's just some straight New York Jew shit. Suddenly, right? I felt like Eric Cartman and his, uh, <laughs> and Eric Cartman and, right? So like Eric Cartman and, let's see if we got the uh, Eric Cartman and his uh, talent agency. Oh, dude. Um, I just love uh, Eric Cartman and his talent agency. The super... <laughs> Yeah, I hate when I turn into Eric Cartman. Oh my God. Remember the super awesome talent agency? Oh, that's just the theme from the super awesome talent agency. Oh my God. I just love the Eric. Oh, that's awesome. Check that out. Uh, talent agency. I'm just one. Oh my God. Dude, maybe we should give up. No, screw that, dude. We keep letting CAA take all our clients. We're never going to make it as talented. Oh, uh, anyway. So that was just such a great episode of South Park. The super awesome talent agency. Super school news. Dude. Oh, my God. Uh, so anyway, all I'm suggesting is 
that I have the ability to to create something here so we were speaking about it some time before i've got you know michigan needs this to bail him out yeah yeah <clears throat> so I, all i'm saying is uh, uh it is just such a we could do something like that too and we can get us some backing because because this is the point where marijuana is going mainstream right and that's the thing is it has to, there's a couple other cannabis networks. They do stuff like that too. The problem is I don't think that they have the platform because all my decisions are funded based on the books and the store moving us forward in a way that a lot of people aren't, a way that a lot of the talent isn't funded. So if you have a, dude, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I, I'm just saying that uh, South Park Ralph, I'm just saying that, uh, you know, we could do something if you guys were into it. You could see I've already started. <laughs> I've created a little bit of business content for stores and vendors. I like that because then when, um, if I do a, something on stocks or one of you do something on stocks, we could also point to a video in the series that says, hey, if you want a little more information about stores and vendors. So it's tough to put a lot of content together. Otherwise, it's my dumb ass sitting here for two and a half hours. Mm. So those are the parts and pieces um, that I'm looking for for the Cannabis Information Network for separate from this. Um, you guys have had a lot of good ideas. And I just can't imagine that a little bit of force multiplication between us has the ability to be more than any of us could be individually. And... Oh yeah, great, Nate. Absolutely, what one person hates, another loves. Everything in my store, somebody has told me sucks. Everything in my store, the other 99 people have told me they loved. So all I'm saying is, it, it looks like, yeah, green pads work great. I love green pads. They are appropriate for a size and a space. Right? I mean, you're not gonna use them outdoors. So it's just like anything else. Motorcycles are awesome, but if you have two kids, when you pick up the second one, they wanna know where the first one is. You know what I mean? Um, okay. So let's talk about weekday shows. Do you guys give me some ideas on time and days? Like I'd like to keep it before seven West coast. I'd like to get Chuck on a weekday show. Um, oh dude, you could totally use my green screen. Yeah. Yeah. That is super friggin' easy to do. It just requires a little more planning on the video side, but yeah, the green screen is awesome. I'm about to put together a video from Mondi where I'm going to take all the videos. I'm going to, I'm going to, oh, what's the word for snatching other people's videos on YouTube's and mashing them into your own? So I'm going to vash them all together. No, <laughs> no, I'm not going to use that one. Um, I'm going to have to figure out some word that won't start with a V like that. Uh, for the YouTube videos, we'll take some YouTube videos, cut the clips, put them together, make a uh, cloning failure video. Then we'll take some Mondi domes. I'll put the Mondi hygro meters on them. And then I'm going to show you a bunch of, you know, hundreds of clones with Mondi hygro meters on them, just like I showed you with the turbo cloner. So, yes. Um, Chuck. Uh, oh, who's Chuck? Chuck's the guy that works here. So I can't. I, Chuck works here all week. I can't do it. I can't work the store and do what I do. So Chuck, uh, five to seven, anytime collaborate. So you, what, like, screw you guys. I'm smoking a bowl. Oh, dude, that'll make me that, that one makes my day. Screw you guys. I'm smoking a bowl. Um, yeah, Chuck works for me. Like, you know, Spray plants with five parts fulbic and two parts kelp to help prevent PM. Um, Rental T, what's up? It's a little late for the show. Tuesdays and Thursdays. Those are pretty good. I like Tuesdays and Thursdays. I think um, I'll be able to reach out to a new and larger audience because, frankly, I've been at 200 the whole show, and that's sort of where I've peaked the last couple shows. So right now I plateaued at the last four or five show peaks. And that's kind of how I gauge what I do is based on the amount of people and the time, right? So I got about, so the show, I started up at eight. I was at 187. I was at 193 by 915. <clears throat> so I was at 95%, you know, 15 minutes in, and then 
it's pretty much till the last time here is uh it's been 200 pretty solid even with uh you know through i tried something new i brought in someone from netherlands to talk us up about there um you know what i mean we had a couple of little side things got a little south park in there and <laughs> <sighs> okay, so the question is, do I do four shows a week or do I do four shows a week, find out where the best shows are, and then maybe do two shows a week, three shows a week, and move them around? Because I could do three shows a week. If I didn't do them two hours, I, you know what I mean? Like, are we talking about four hours a week? Because this show's two and a half hours. I mean, that's the thing about YouTube. It's not like, uh, it's not like radio time that you got to pay for. YouTube is free. So, website, we can join. Um, stay on point. I don't know what my point is after two and a half hours. So, okay, so stream on Twitch. Okay. That's right, I forgot. Somebody had brought up to me AMA Reddit, Twitch. Okay. You can send me, this guy, you can send me, one hour is too short. I agree with that. <clears throat> Yeah, <laughs> I, dude, I was like looking at so Semit over here says, hey, I'm a customer in front of your store. Can you open up? Dude, dude, always funny. Oh my God. Most of my target market is still asleep right now. That's why I was thinking evenings because once I sort of have this in the back of my store, I just sort of push the table forward and then you can see, you know what I mean? What's behind me and customers can walk back there. I push the chair up under there. I can do some work in here if I want, but I can also disappear for the day during the week if I need to. So Twitch sucks. But my question about Twitch would be, does Twitch force ads on me? Because YouTube, I don't have to monetize my video. That's the best part. I don't have to monetize any of this. Um, um, common sense to weave out. Then you can see pictures. Okay, so... So what you're said, okay, Twitch is for gamers. So how about something where, fuck, someplace where you guys can upload pictures and like twice a week, I can just do a show where I just go straight through pictures and comment. And then I can do a show where we talk like this once a week, but once a week I could do, don't compete with Game of Thrones. Oh my God. I've never seen an episode. I haven't seen. I don't think I've seen 15 seconds of that show. Oh, they do force it. Okay. Oh, you can't do Twitch unless it's gaming. I've heard that. Google Plus Live. Okay. So somebody tell me more about Google Plus Live. Listen, I may be a computer guy, but there are so many fucking platforms that you can't cope with them all. And Emp Proof Tent. Why? I don't know about that one. Don't do it. Okay. Yeah, I haven't had TV in 15 years. I need a forum. All right, so Dank Lizard, tell me more about a forum. Is this somewhere where I have to type and respond? Because I'm not going to do that. That's pretty time consuming. Oh, see, okay, so Hydro Store Live, right? Like the live Hydro Hustle where I buy shit used and new. Okay, so I have my uh, demo station. I could put stuff up. I could totally. The problem is I don't know if, if, if people, we know, we learned from last time. Um, we learned from last time the customers really don't want to be on there, right? Because. Um, I like the pick thing. Okay. I, I love the picks and viewers sending it in. Okay. So Thomas, what you're suggesting then is I just do a straight show where I roll through pictures and comment just like I produce, like, let's say 45 minute, um, where I just roll through pictures and stuff like that. I, I'm a Facebook live. Hmm. One hour is too short. Okay, so we have a couple different things. We can hang out for two, three hours once, you know, two hours twice a week. We could do Sundays and Wednesdays, whatever the other day is. 
but but there's some there's something to be said for sampling the market i could literally sit in for the next month for an hour and just do shows for an hour from five to six every day okay go to meeting okay so now we're talking about a bunch of people <laughs> you like your violence and porn separate dude i totally agree with that uh, yeah i just don't do yeah so it'll yeah see that's just it they wouldn't want their id disclosed um so we could you know what i mean like we could record it and face them all out i could do that i think i could just let it run in my store and face it all out because it's public and then i just blur face them out um and uh we could go from there i went I wonder if uh, that's something we could do. Uh, it would probably require a better cam. See, I tried to do the Hydro Store, the show once before. I think, uh, <laughs> I think, uh, I think I would have to do, I think it looked like, uh, <laughs> I've tried this before and maybe the world wasn't ready for it yet. Oh, no, no, no. I'd have to go to. What's, what, I don't even know. You know what? It's been so long. I don't even know what it is anymore. So this, I think, was going out to the advertisers. It wasn't for lack of effort. <laughs> my Skycam. I love my Skycam. Ah, oh, dude, my CO2 guy was the best. Hydroponics can be confusing and expensive if you don't know what you're doing. That's why I wrote the Grow Book and Equipment Guide and these fat cards. Sold at your local store. It's everything you need to know to get started doing this without wasting all that money. I'm the Grow Boss. I wrote the book. Trust me, I answer the same questions. I love that day, dude. And this book is full of the answers. Oh, the lone wolf! When you're in Vegas, you need to come down to That's Hedges Chuck. Agro. Be here Saturday. If you're not here Saturday, you better be dead or in jail. <laughs> God, I just love Chuck. But raw soluble nutrients are designed to do just that. Completely dissolve. There'll be no nutrients left over. You're at the store all day long what do you do take some of my no more grow more cards spread them out on the counter customer comes in give them some cards next time they come back they'll be asking for them why because it's everything <laughs> they need to know to grow and i can be sure of it because it answers all the questions i get in the store day after day the no more grow more fat cards by me yeah. the grow boss Yeah, yeah. Can you just see how super pleased I am with myself? <sighs> yeah. You better be dead or in jail. But, oh, dude. Sham wow. See, bah, that's what I was talking about. Dude, I've got, listen, I got a, a touch of Sham wow, a bit of Billy Mays, a whole lot of my New York Jew grandpa. Oh, yeah. Oh, I just love it. Listen, we all have to embrace our heritage to some point. Like, genetically, like, I turned out to end up doing, like, what I guess I was, like, predisposed to do. I mean, you look back throughout history, and, I mean, they call them the Jew brokers. You know why they call them Jew brokers? Because the Jews had broker shops. It was the Jew brokers. Like, Ethiopians have Ethiopian food shops. That's what it is. 
Dude, so I ended up creating my own advertising platform and selling advertising. Bah. No, seriously, I had to put a lot of skills together to do it, which is why I'm super pleased. But I'm unhirable, like in a corporation, I'm unhirable. I mean, you see, you can't, you can't put me, it's tough to put me in a midst of a group of people. You know what I mean? Like we're all just plodding along, moving paperwork. It, it boggles my mind. So yeah, it's super funny. Auction. See, then I'd have to ship stuff, but I like the idea of an auction. What, uh, it's not a bad commercial. I mean, um, you know what I mean? That was a pretty good commercial. I thought Blackman, you know what I mean? Like it's, it was just, nobody was ready for it. Nobody wants. So, um, no dude, that headset satellite dish. Oh my God. We talk about that shit all the time. Yeah. I don't need any ID disclosures Auc au auction and ship us some awesome U S here in Massachusetts. <laughs> Um, yeah, but if you don't, if you don't grow, so you have nothing to hide, why would you be in the store? So, ah, oh, dude. Oh, you get 25% bigger yield just for wearing my shirt. That's right. The grow boss shirt with all the manufacturers on the back that advertise with me. Oh yeah. Oh, buy my shirt and get better yields. Oh, dude, if you buy my, uh, if you buy the, if you buy the everything clone kit now for one forty nine ninety nine ninety five, you'll throw in a second clone kit for just the price of shipping and handling one forty nine ninety nine ninety five plus the grow boss shirt. Oh, dude. I mean, <laughs> uh, I'm just saying it's, uh, I, I, I'm just saying that's, uh, that's where I think it's headed. Okay, listen, I think my voice is done for today. Um, listen, have a great week. I'm so glad everybody hung out. I'm going to sit here and do whatever it is I got to do for the store today. I've got deals on T5s. I've got steals on fan filters. I've got LEDs used. I'm practicing. Oh, is that too expensive? Oh, let me chop it. <laughs> right? 95 freeway, sunset exit, east, three blocks, <laughs> we're the little store right across the street from the big yellow building henderson hydro dun -dun 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 -dun. do a little bouncing ball long beach freeway firestone exit southgate ah dude oh my god all right so those people are all for the restaurant next door um oh yeah volvos you don't ever see five-year-old volvos on the road huh um okay so that's it for my show. I feel like always oh, Bob and Doug McKenzie. You know what I mean? Like from the Great White North. There's no real start to their show. There's no real end to their show. Just a couple dudes with a good little goo 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 goo. Ah, there's just nothing like. Uh... You know what I think my favorite part about my show is. My favorite part about the show. Bob and Doug McKenzie take off. My favorite part about the show is specifically, I love Family Guy. And you know how he always goes and does these throwback references? I like the uh, fact uh, that I'm hi, so Getty. organized I'm now. McKenzie, this is my brother Doug. How's it going, Getty? Oh, it's going pretty good. Good day, eh? Good day. Good day. Oh, I love my the fact How's it going, eh? that I can just... Beauty, eh? Yeah, I like that. Okay, okay. this is the park okay, right everyone, here. This record was my idea. Oh, I love this. It was. You're lying. All right, Bob and Doug McKenzie, I love the fact that I get to do straight throwback <laughs> while I'm talking. That was my goal. Like, I've got all the cameras down. I got everything down. And I can pull a straight video from YouTube because most of you guys are probably old enough to remember some of the stuff that I pull back. You know, like, I know, like, I'm... Uh, Mo got to, I invented, I'll tell you, I'll share something with you. Piano key. Ah, oh, dude. Like, you know how like those famous people, they get pulled over, they're drinking their mouth and off. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Like, you know, my customers make fun of me. Like you're the grill boss. Do you know who I am? Do you know who I am? Listen, I, I got to tell you, I always feel like I'm the grow boss. I wrote it. What have you done?
What have you got to say for yourself? Nothing. Dude. <laughs> Dude. When I tell you that I live my life like a uh, family guy episode. Oh, my God. Like, this is the shit that rolls through my head. <laughs> like, I'm the girl boss. What have you done, Zoolander? I wrote the girl book and equipment guide. I wrote it. <laughs> yeah, my dumb ass. Just let's be clear, though, that I'm clear that my dumb ass wrote it. And it isn't anything. Oh, take off, eh? Um, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So that, uh, that's, <laughs> ah, that's like literally what rolls through my head. You know what I mean? If there's a problem, I just think about like, you know what I mean? Like Luke Skywalker, he's got to overcome it or something like that. Mm. Um, listen, Blackman, I, you know, I gotta say, I used to make fun of people that I thought that was funny, but I gotta tell you, as I got older and as you start to see different things in the news and as you get more mature and you get an injury and you start to realize just how, how fragile life is, dude, I was 21. I mean, I was 18. I didn't think I was going to make it to 21. You know what I mean? At 21, I didn't think I was gonna make it 24. I'm just saying, as you get older and as you get hurt, you start to realize that there's a difference. And I don't think that there's anybody demonstrating that. There's a lot of people complaining that they're being hurt by the way people are being made fun of. And they are 100% right. I'm not sure about tearing down the statues. I mean, history is history. We can learn from it. We don't have to repeat it. And that's why you have to learn from it. I don't know about tearing down statues, but I would say a nameplate that expresses where we've come today from where we were then might be something that's appropriate because we can't deny the history. We can't deny what we did. We also can't deny that we don't do the same things history did. Just like I don't deny that I don't make fun of almost anybody anymore. I mean, sometimes customers have come in front of my store and make fun of their habits and stuff, but they're still good people. Listen, the guy leaves a negative review. I mean, what do you want, man? You could have left my store. You didn't have to say something to me. You didn't have to drag it in. So, you know what I mean? But still, I don't call him an asshole. I don't, but you know what I mean? I'm like, dude, you come in here. You're kind of wacky. So I'm just saying humility, man, I am my favorite person. Um, so, oh, dude, Bob and Doug McCoop, strange brew. Oh, yeah. I'm just saying, listen. You're allowed to feel hurt by some of the things I say, but I'm allowed to say some of the things I say too. And I try to say them such that everybody gets the respect they deserve. And I definitely didn't used to do that. Um, I don't, uh, you know, things, you know, you get older, you know what I mean? So yeah, I'm just suggesting that, listen, as I've aged, my mindset has changed too. Um, yeah. If women can't find you handsome, at least they find you handy. Listen, my my opinion of what... Oh, uh, maybe that doesn't change. <clears throat> I've always liked old ladies. <laughs> but my opinion hasn't changed. You know what I mean? Like, my opinion of what... You, you sort of get hurt. You sort of get tolerant. People get set in their ways. Like, you know what I mean? You own a house. What would you do if you had a girlfriend? You'd have to share your closet. Fuck it. You know what I mean? Put your shit in the other room so you don't have to deal with it. I'm just saying that. There are things that uh, you tolerate when you get older that you couldn't even imagine existed. I have glasses now. I'm just saying that there's there's different levels of, of what you're willing to accept as you get older. Red, green, yes. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, totally. Bulba, totally. I'm just suggesting that the, the maturity level that I'm at, when I look at stuff now compared to when I look at stuff when I was younger, dude, like I was an animal. It, it, there was no thought behind the action. And I'm just suggesting that Dune had it right when they had you put your uh, um, Dune the movie pain box. When they had, uh, when they had Paul Moa Deeb put his uh, hand in the pain box to see if uh, there's a to test to see if he was an animal or human. I'm just suggesting that, uh, that, uh, I, I see the point differently as an adult. Flesh. Flesh. I'm a 
Dude. This is my life, right? This is what goes on in the Grow Boss head. Remember Herman's head? Grow Boss head. This is when something gets tough, this is what I see. And I think of myself, you know, versus a child versus as an adult. Oh. Sorry. Damn it. Enough! No man, woman, child has ever withstood so much. Anyway, <laughs> I'm just suggesting that, uh, <laughs> I'm just suggesting that there are these, you know what I mean? That there is these things that you just have to go through as you get older. So yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, you say, yes, honey. Listen, there comes this point. I'll tell you what the problem is. The problem is like, does Chuck do things that piss me off? Oh, hell yes. Dude, it's eight. It's a lot, 10 hours a day, a lot of days of the week. The thing is, I would never tell him anymore. I wouldn't even want him to fix him because I don't want my employee to feel self-conscious. I like him here. I like him just the way he is. And the problems aren't enough to outweigh for me to say anything. Even when it's something I feel strongly about, I don't say anything. Oh my God. Could you imagine? <laughs> oh yeah. Like next time I'll, some other time I'll tell you the story about me in college uh, yeah, yeah, where, the, where I learned that it, it was me that was talking too much. Oh, yeah. Ah, oh, dude. Uh, you didn't see a good time to call Queen B. Listen, you can always call and interrupt me. I've just been gabbing until someone comes in the store. Listen, it's Sunday. Sometimes I got people at the door. Sometimes I don't. It's super funny. I would like to point out, though, that it is super funny that you guys like, remember the TV show Herman's Head? Ah, oh, dude, I don't know if you guys remember Herman's Head. But, but... Um, Herman had all these troubled. That woman's not wearing underwear. Is that all you can think about? Food and sex? Yes. Please, focus. Look out! Ah, dude. It is, all of those people are just swimming around up there. You know what I mean? Like all the different, not voices. You know, the different people that you got. Oh, shit. You know what? This is is queen bee good morning good morning now i just wanted to talk a little bit about transitioning from veg to bloom because that's the time i'm coming up on and thank you for writing the book the best 20 dollars i ever spent and i was wondering if i should move my five gallons to a 10 gallon um smart pot that's all my questions Listen, I appreciate the emails and the pictures. I wanted to say thanks so much and thanks for the call. It is good to meet you, Queen Bee. Thank you. Thank you. All right, I'll answer your question real quick um, about transplanting because I have some of your pictures here. Let's see. So this is paint. All right, so let's open up the next picture. Let's save this. Let's open up the next picture. This one looks like it's about the same. So pictures that I get there. Okay, so let's open up the next one. Um, I'm going to tell you that I don't think you have to transplant. I'll tell you they look like they look like they might have a little over water to them. Let's keep on cruising, keep on cruising, right? I mean, you just you can just uh, feel it going right through there, my my Polly. Uh, okay, so my inner polish shore. Okay, so there's a couple of things going on here, and it looks like you're under, you know, you got a little bit of light. I mean, the plants look good. You've got them. The thing about your plants is that, is that you got them small and wide. Let's take a look. See, you got a lot of branches, real short, where like the other guy was like, his plants were running into the light. The leaves look a little puffy. They don't particularly look like they're growing pretty fast, but you got some mad topping skills, Queen Bee. But there's some puffy. There's a little bit of puffy and down in that one. There's a little bit of tip droop in this one. So maybe back off on the nutrients and the frequency of the watering. And then I don't see the light in the picture. So that looks like it's about right. I don't see the light in any of the pictures. So that looks like about right. I'd say put them a little closer together and maybe bring the light a little closer. Listen, I totally appreciate the call. 
let's see what do we got here and uh and it was a pleasure to meet you because you've been sending me emails it's always nice to put a voice to the emails <laughs> They're green though. That's what I'm saying. Like she doesn't have too much. She doesn't have too much light because, oh yes, you're listening. Thanks queen B. It doesn't say like you have too much light because they're not purple. So you've got the right amount of the right amount of mag. What I'm suggesting is, is that they don't, I, because they're so small, they're because they've gotten so wide and so small and she's topped so quickly. What I'd like to say is if you had more light, to achieve that same looking plant, it would be six inches taller if the plant were growing faster. Because remember, no matter what you do, that plant is always going vertical. That's why good growers say, bah, my plants always run into the lights. And that's why growers that have problems always say, my buds smell like hay, grow boss, because they ran into the light. Why? Because if you have to take a month to fix your plant, it's going to get a month taller. But the canopy won't change. The, the amount of canopy is based on light. So if you will allow me to show you <coughs> the, this picture again, remember the distance from the distance from here to here, right there, the distance from there to there, if you have to grow them a month longer to fix the problem, the distance will just go from there to there. However, also consider that the canopy that was here will now also have to get moved up here now, right? Same canopy, but suddenly you're all in the lights now. That's why I'm suggesting that, um, that it's a difficult thing to have a problem in your garden because the plant is always going vertical. See what I'm saying? If the plant's always going vertical and you got to veg an extra month, even if you slow your roll and the plant comes out great, your canopy is going to be a month vertical higher. And if your plants grow in the way it should, then it'll be a foot higher for sure. That's why when I see the, the canopy so close like this, I know that it's been a real slow grow. And when I hear slow grow, I tend to think slow, healthy grow, slow, healthy grow. I tend to think uh, more about the amount of light. I'm just suggesting that when we look at this part down here in the leaves, that either we're running out of light or it's got a touch of over water and she's looking to go into a bigger bucket. So I'm thinking there's probably a touch of over water in there just based on the question. So those look good. What I think is they need a little more light because you see how little canopy there is. Little canopy, slow growth, low light, everything looks good. Everything looks good means the light's in the zone. If the light's in the zone, we already know it's less than every other caller that's ever called the show has said. In fact, in fact, I had, I had... I had <clears throat> Nope. Nope. I had Nope. Show. Nope. <laughs> Fuck, I just put this guy in here too because he had so many Let me see. Okay, maybe this is it. So he had so many. Let's take a look at the next one. Um, what's in here? Okay. Yeah, this is this is that. Okay, so here are, you know, you look at the, I always talk to you about the legs, how much legs are in there. He's got good packing, but you can see through the canopy on the way up. That's why I'm saying uh, you got to pay attention because sometimes you get a little bit much leg in there. So. You know what I mean? Like those plants are too tall. The canopy is too tall indoors. You need to go wide. Otherwise you run into the lights. 
let's see what the next one the next one is file open let's check this out Woo! oh yeah there was a little little hermit problem in this one i don't i don't think this is the one i was going for anyway okay i'm done you guys are awesome if you guys want any more information if you guys have any ideas let's see um woman again those are the afternoon everybody in nob what kind of lights how many watts uh I would test me one of pH, but I guess there really isn't anything to do. Let's fade in end show music. Pack end show bowl, but not in front of uh, not in front of those Hermes. That's what I need. I need a little product that sprays spider mites. Like when people come in, like an Ona gel, instead of it's all smells like good, just be like little thrips. Spray them on some thrips. That's a good product. <laughs> okay, so that was more girl boss than you probably wanted to know. <clears throat> yeah, I figure that's everything you wanted to know. So I'm going to end the show. That's it for me today. Um, my new desk looks pretty good with less stuff on it. I'm going to finish up some stuff, get some videos done. Um, I'll probably see you later in this week, maybe. If not, next weekend for sure. Uh, always, uh, let me just thank my advertisers. Mondi Humidity Domes, Thermoflow Ducting. Green Pad, Clonex Solution, Clonex Rooting Gel, Clonex Mist, before you take your clones. There are a lot of good products for growing indoors. And if you use them properly and safely, they all work the way they should. So, I think that's enough Grow Boss for this weekend. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'll see you next weekend or later in the week. Oh. Yeah, turn this off before I get caught with the hot mic. <laughs>